Peace, peace, family. Peace to the family. Uh, let me know how we're sounding on the audio. Peace, peace to the family. Hey, there we Sounds go. Good. Okay. All right. We in surround sound. Yeah, I'm on the Wi-Fi, but yeah, we should be good. So people who are on the Wi-Fi, they should be good. Your mic clear. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Awesome, 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 slawsome. All right, family, we are in the building. We are here. All right. Um, one more time, one more again. We started this thing out a week ago with the Vulture series. And here we are a week later, or what they call a strong later. Now, I just want to know, it's how many in the building already? It's more than, it's past 50. We We linked up seven days ago, mind you, right? I, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, it was seven days ago. What the fuck? God damn it. That, what In seven days, a goddamn three subway novels already done dropped. Yeah, worth for information. Like, I can't make this up. No wonder Wendy Williams is in the state she is. It's too much. It's too much. Yeah, they fucked around and crashed her computer. There's just too much scandal going on. Too much news. We can't keep up. But we can't keep up, so that's why we're here tonight. And... I brought a friend with me. You know what I'm talking about? I brought I brought a friend because me and Blue Pill was unpacking some things last Thursday. So it was like, you know what? I got to unpack so much this Thursday because life is lifing. And we truly are in what they call the Aquarian age. Because if we were not in the Aquarian age, I promise you, you would not be seeing the things that you're seeing right now. Um, there, there's no the, the the director of this movie is of a higher higher power, and they already dropped the script in many of our hands and whatnot in the form of ancient texts, scrolls, and things of that nature. Many of us have been familiarized with this saga or this mythos that we see in front of us. You know, there's a author by the name of Joseph Campbell. And he has a book that talks about the hero with a thousand faces. But he also talks about the power of the mythos. I think I have the book. Give me one second. Let me see if I got the book. Let me see if I got the book. Give me one second. Selves comfortable. I see y'all in the building, man. Make yourselves comfortable. This is going to be a powerful, powerful night. Peace, peace, man. Can y'all hear me? Am I coming through? Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, good, good. Sir, you loud and clear, my brother. So, yeah, I got this book right here, which is called The Encyclopedia of Gods. My Joseph Campbell book is somewhere else. But in The Hero with a Thousand Faces, he speaks about the hero's journey. Right. And the hero's journey is something that is very important that we all have to really take a set. You know, I mean, it deserves not just one show or not just one lecture, to be honest with you. The hero's journey, it deserves about a four week master class because that is how imperative, that is how deep, and that is how um on point understanding overstanding and understanding the hero's journey is right is it goes beyond speculation it goes beyond um what they call conjecture right it is a livable formula it's something that every single individual could apply to their lives especially if y'all tapped into these networks because if you're over here you're on a journey you can't meet me on this road 
unless you're on the road less travel i don't exist on broadway and things that I, i'm not standing out there where everybody else is at this is the road less travel so when you're on this road you're on what is known as the hero's journey on a hero's journey you are being challenged by life itself on a hero's journey you are embarking on this quote-unquote quest whether it be for knowledge whether it be for abundance whether it be for the riches whatever it may be you're on this journey and whatnot and when you decide to embark upon this journey you will be challenged so the day that you took the red pill and was like you know what f that i'm finna i'm finna go against what uh my religious or my zealot like friends or you know my um co-workers or my contemporaries try to scare me and tell me not to do or what what curtain they told me not to look behind or what door that they told me not to walk into i'm finna do this i'm gonna finna put my finger in the glass and my hand goes through it i'm about to bend the spoon you feel me? I'm about to go into the dark unknown because there's something that's calling my name and I can hear it. Y'all might not hear that voice, but I hear it. And then you go on your journey. Why are we drawn to the movie so much? Why do these blockbuster movies always bring us into the movie theater? Because the majority of them are written off of the framework of what they call the hero's journey. And they're also written off of the framework of what is called the Asarian myth or the Asarian tale and that story has been told and recycled time after time after time after time after time right and it will continue to be recycled you feel me so we live in a day and time when we're all collectively on our hero's journey so what does that mean what that means is no one nobody there's not a person on this planet who you could look to from your left and your right who you could say damn this person got it better than me oh i wish i was this per you don't know what that person's hero journey is you don't know what level of the hero's journey that person is on because i promise you this on the hero's journey there's highs and there's lows similar to being on a carousel or a carnival or any type of amusement park ride. You're going to have those highs. But you're also going to have those lows. You're going to have those moments of joy. But you're also going to have those moments of doubt and fear. Where you're going to be like, damn, what if my my belt buckle came off? Or what if this, you know what I mean? What if this, mm. uh, you know what I'm saying? What if this, this shit just swings me off the goddamn, you know, into space? So we have to take a personal toll. Right, the ebbs and the flows. We have to collectively and individually take a toll on our journey. But what we also have the ability to do is we can examine other people's journey because the hero's journey is the hero's journey. And once you step out on what they call the stage, once you put yourself in the public as a public figure, once you become known, because you have the ability and you have the right to be anonymous. That is something that you have the right. You have the right to walk around and wear a mask all day. You have the right not to come outside. You have a right to not give your name. You have the right to remain silent. But when you choose to put yourself out there, then you become a lesson. And everybody's watching and people are learning from you and whatnot. So there are a, a uh, uh, there are so many stories and so many heroes journeys that are converging in these uh, first few months of 2024. There are so many lessons to be taught and to be learned by the rise and the fall that we see of people who've been in the public's eyes for a very long time. This man right behind me with the with the star David on his forehead and whatnot, he might have been around longer than anybody on this quote unquote flyer and whatnot. This man right here is called Jacob Rock of, uh, Rothschild, right? We was breaking down Jacob and whatnot with uh with the show that I did with the good brother Crumb from Crumb TV. Send that good brother Crumb some good energy and whatnot. Salute to Crumb. Shout out to Crumb. Um, and I don't think people understand, nor could they fathom. Because mainstream media is not going to talk about this man, nor are they going to talk about the significance of this man's family 
nor are they going to talk about the, the the wickedness and the levels of depravity and how far down the rabbit hole and how far of a of a when this man made transition things died with him okay this is a this is one of the most diabolical individuals on this quote unquote plane of existence right and prior to that a man called henry kissinger kissed the quote unquote you know uh had a had a tongue kiss death and whatnot and he was taken up out of here there's so many things that are taking place all around us and we may not be able to be capturing all of the quote quote unquote nuances or the stories and whatnot henceforth why individual media is needed right henceforth why reporters such as myself and blue pill right were needed and whatnot why reporters such as al kibalon who are able to decode not just report like dan rather is doing rather to see the nuances to be able to be symbol literate like black dot and his son malcolm like brother rich like katie the arch degree you feel me this is an art this is an art and this art is something that you know is 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 is, is effective <laughs> it's very effective because i'll be damned if i don't be sitting back and hearing blue pill break some shit down and unravel some shit and then i see the the whole play the next day unraveling before my very own eyes i had to publicly apologize to beyonce my genius because i was like you know i i, I spoke out of terms i spoke against the country music and all of the things that they were about to do not realizing the depth of what that whole demonstration really is about you feel me so I had to say, nah, I'm taking that back. This country shit is lit. Shout out to all of the melanated country singers out there. I'm finna get my boots and whatnot and go get my my country, uh, my my Louis country shit from Pharrell. And I'm <laughs> stepping out too. You know what I'm talking about? I'm stepping out too. My name is Philip, which means the lover of horses. How dare I talk crazy? My name is Philip, which means the lover of horses. I'm a horseman. You feel me? I was into polo from a baby. Like, nah, horses are my thing. I got traumatized in St. Croix because I saw them take a horse down and they picked that shit up in a um in a in a in a bulldozer and dumped that shit. We was in school. We were in school. We had like when we was in school in St. Croix, they would hit you with rulers and whatnot. I don't know if it was Catholic school. I was wild young. But we hear something go pop, like two pop. We hear it's like balloons popping and whatnot. So we all run to the to the window and we look out and they putting the horse down. They put a big, they put the horse down and threw that shit in the back of the uh in in a um in a in a you know in a bulldozer. I was completely messed up after that, bro. Cause I was a love, I'm a lover of horses, you know. So I had to get I had to get my lick back at the Ralph Lauren store. So no, I, I'm I'm pro I'm pro uh, country music. I'm pro that wave. You feel me? Everything that Texas has to offer, everything that Arizona had, all of the melanated um, communities. Salute to y'all, man. Y'all 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 keep doing y'all thing. You feel me? And um, without any further ado, y'all, I want to bring on a brother who helps. Many of us walk through our hero's journey, right? By pointing out the science, the 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 in the intelligentsia at work, right? By showing us that this is quote unquote a programmable reality, and there are nuances that you have to quote unquote pay attention to that you might not necessarily pay attention to every day because of the distractions and because of the fact that some of us have veils over our eyes but what this young man does is he points out numbers and he points out the colors and he shows you how these things show up in popular culture and in society and how symbol literacy is a real thing and the great divine speaks through signs and once you locked in 
nobody can lie to you because the great divine is not gonna lie to you it's not it's not about illusion and it's damn sure not about disillusion it's more so about the truth and it's more so about being able to be content in what it is that you're seeing and hearing and whatnot so without any further ado ladies and gentlemen i want to bring to the stage our very own ktl's alumni al kibalon the dawn peace Peace, 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 peace. Clap it up, yeah, y'all can clap it up. Let's go. <laughs> clap peace, it up. peace, to the, Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peace to the family. Let me see. Let me, let me. Okay, we're good. Um, <clears throat> so you know, uh, this is just a preliminary. You know, we got a uh, monumental lecture that we're building out. Um, for uh, the twenty second. Um, you know, 322, my yeah, 322 fire. So, we so that the numbers alone, um, you know, are powerful. And as we can see, you know, it's a lot of stuff going on in the news. Um, you know, what we're going to dive into during the lecture alone is, you know, we're all bearing witness to the activity of the sun. You know, the sun is playing a major role as to you know why everything is coming to the forefront um you know maybe about what two or three months ago you know you bear witness for those who've seen the what they call the you know um the northern lights or what they call the aurora borealis um over in iceland you know they documented sound that was coming from those northern lights um and that sound is predicated on natural harmonic series. And when I say natural harmonic series, I'm talking about in conjunction to genetics. I'm talking about in conjunction to microbiology. Because as we all know, as above, so below, we all know that we had a symbiotic relationship to the sun, but the sun is predicated on sound. You know, so when we're talking about sound, we're talking about a level of information from a celestial body that we can't audibly hear as if somebody was talking to us. But we can hear, you know, things predicated on um, information that's being delivered if we can bear witness to it and develop a level of coherence to be able to embody those downloads as sound and get that download um, in and of itself. So, you know, when we're talking about, you know, genetics, um, we're talking about more specifically linguistics and linguistics deals with speech. It deals with sound. More specifically, we're talking about linguistic wave genetics, linguistic wave genetics. So when people were bearing witness to a sound that was coming from the Aurora Borealis based on, right, um, a natural harmonic series, we're talking about numbers. So when we look out in nature, nature is governed by uh, specific numbers. These numbers are 4, 3, 64, and 22. Now this 4, 3, 64, and 22 is embodied in the DNA. So when you have these solar flares going off, these solar flares are connected to certain numbers based on, again, and I'm going to repeat myself a lot so that way you guys can internalize what I'm saying. These numbers correspond to the solar flares are based on a natural harmonic series. And these numbers are 4, 3, 4, 3, 64, and 22. So when you look in the body, um, you have, of course, the DNA, but you got the four nucleotides or base pairs. Um, so when you got the number four in reference to the natural harmonic series, you got four base pairs in the DNA, cytosine, guanine, thymine, adenine, right? So you only need three to synthesize what you call triplet codons. Now, triplet codons, triplet codons is the genetic language that speaks directly to the DNA. Currently, our codons are in a state of redundancy. And I'm going to go more specifically in that in the lectures because, you know, words alone can't really explain, you know, how in depth I can get into this with it. We need visuals. So 
you know, the codons is the genetic language that speaks directly to the DNA. So again, when you're dealing with the four, the three, the 64, and the 22, those are the natural harmonic series of sound predicated to the aurora borealis or northern lights that they heard out in Iceland or the solar flares just in general. But they denote a biological reference based on linguistic wave genetics because these sounds communicate directly to your DNA, more specifically your codons that are naturally stuck in a state of redundancy predicated on reservoirs of information that are naturally encoded within us, but they haven't been stimulated yet based on this natural series of harmonics, which is four, three, 64, and 22, to speak to the codons, to get them out of a state of dunancy and bring cosmic ancient information to the surface or to the conscious mind. So again, when we look into the DNA, we look at the four. The four plays in reference to the nucleotide or the four base pairs that make up the DNA. When we look at the three, we look at the triplet codons. These triplet codons are assigned to 20 amino acids. So the 20 plays out in reference to the triplet codons being assigned to a specific amino acid. The 22 comes into play when you have synthesis of proteins turning on or off. So when you look at the four again, then four is based on the base pairs or the nucleotides that make up the DNA. The three is predicated on the codons or what you call triplet codons. The 64 now is tied into the variations that these codons can make up. So there's a combination of 64 that these triplet codons can make up in reference to a combination. And these codons are assigned to 20 amino acids. So when you are in alignment predicated on receiving information that's coming from the sun via sound, that sound or natural series of harmonics is recoding the DNA based on these numbers to stimulate the interest of information that's naturally encoded within the codons to bring them to the conscious mind. This again is getting to getting into, and people can write this down, linguistic wave genetics, linguistic wave genetics, because we're talking about speech. Now, I find it interesting that, um, you know, uh, just recently, we heard that uh, Jacob um, Rothschild had uh, made transition. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to go uh, another angle with this in reference to what I'm speaking on, so that way we can stay on topic. But, you know, it was known that the Rothschilds believed that they came from the bloodline of Nimrod, right? Nimrod is a uh, Sumerian god. Um, who sp spoke about in Genesis and the Old T Testament. Um, and he was said to be responsible for destroying the Tower of Babel and eventually go against God. He was a uh, adversary. He was, he was, he was chaotic. He was a war deity, you know, and the Rothschilds believe that their DNA traced back to Nimrod. Now, this is why the Rothschilds as well were into um interbreeding with family members to maintain a specific harmonic series in the codon so that way they don't lose the integrity of the information being translated from person to person via them believing they're tied into Nimrod. Now, going back to what I said, Nimrod was responsible for, as said, destroying the Tower of Babel. When we look at the concept of the Tower of Babel, Babel is in reference to linguistics, which is speech, right? So babies babble, right? Um, you know, and tower denotes a specific vertical integration. So when you're thinking about tower, you're thinking about height. You're thinking about the raising of something. You're thinking about um, something being tall. So when you say tower of babble, more specifically, you're talking about raising the frequency to a point where language will no longer become English anymore. So when Nimrod knocked down the Tower of Babel, that then removed the specific language that we spoke in antiquity because sound was the key. Sound becomes light. So information wasn't coming from us necessarily from our mouths per se. We were speaking through telepathy. We were using um 
what they consider or call the physical medium or counter space or empty space to generate sound between one individual um, to another. So beyond this physical reality, there is no English, there are no words. So the Tower of Babel is denoted by raising or elevating it to a height where you're no longer using the common way of delivering information, which is through words, through English. So when that is destroyed, the original language is removed. Now, it's interesting, again, that he just passed away because now with sound moving into a whole nother spectrum, you know, um, in our reality, henceforth, you see, you know, uh, individuals like Andre 3000 dropping a flute album, um, which, you know, we'll get into in the lecture as well. We're moving into a space where sound will not only become the mechanism for healing, but sound will also be the mechanism that we use non-audibly in a way where, again, we don't physically hear the sound, but we intuitively hear the sound, right? So when we move into this space that we're going into, not only will sound be different from the level that we hear it through intuition or through the sun, through different star systems, but music itself is moving into a different arena relative to what you call counterpoint music. Counterpoint music. Counterpoint music yeah. is what individuals like Mozart used or right. individuals like Shakespeare right. used. You know, this is all in reference to a specific sound that, again, has its ties into genetics. Can you, you see? Right. Go, is go is ahead, there Ray. anybody that makes that kind of music today? The, the Mozart and the Shakespeare? That you could point out? Today? Yeah, in today's times. Um, I, I would say somebody who makes that type of music. I mean, the closest thing that I can even think of right now that just literally came at the top of the dome was, you know, um, Kendrick Lamar has a lot of, like, imitations of certain instruments that are used in like Mozart. The specific album that I'm talking about is the Pimp a Butterfly. A lot of that was used in that album specifically, right. even the more recent one, right. um, you know, but they call it counterpoint uh, music. And, you know, again, this is a level of music that, that's dealing with harmonics, you know? So when you're dealing again with harmonics, you're speaking about the language that the sun speaks, which is sound. Right. So sound. Down. So yeah, I'm going to add on. Yeah, go ahead. That Blue pointed out our good brother, Professor Griff, dropped a sound album. Out of the left field, Little John dropped the sound right. album. Right. And then, of course, Andre 3000 drops the sound album. Right. So right out of a right out of right out of the A, these are all Atlanta artists. Right. And they're they're they they're not asking the permission, you know. They they're collective. They're they're doing things individually, but it's a collective movement because, like you're saying, it, it, it you know that's that reset. That's what's taking place. But please continue. Uh, yeah, that's perfect. I mean, that's the reset. And you know what I theorize, and I, I'm um you know because I have this thing right where, you know, I'm developed a certain capacity to be able to inherit information that's coming from the future, rolling backwards um, that I received to foreshadow what's to play out based on what I speak about in the present moment. So where I feel is if hip hop is going is eventually there is going to be no sound. But this is, again, before I speak on this, this is if we continue to refine ourselves to a point where we're able to channel information that's not through word per se, it's through intuition and it's through manipulating the physical medium. When again, when I say physical medium, I'm talking about counter space or what they call the zero point or what they call dark matter. It's the space in between me and this phone. When we know how to self-engineer this space, we can manipulate the primordial waters as the ancestors called it to produce sound that somebody over in Atlanta can hear instantaneously. So we're talking about a certain of form of telepathy 
And people have heard me use this term uh, plenty of times, but this is going into a science, which is, is a science that we'll talk about on the 22nd, called laser interferometry. It's the same level of language that the sun speaks. It's called laser interferometry. Mm. Um, you know, so with that being said, Can I offer you know, when, when, when we're talking about hip hop, hip hop is going more or eventually going to go into a space where there'll be no longer words. It'll right. be just be visuals. It'll be still shots. It'll be art. And what's going to happen is you're going to internalize music predicated on the visual that you're picturing right. and that you're viewing. Right. So the the album is going to filter through you different than the person next to you based on the visual that your eyes are capturing. So right. say, you know, for example, let's just use Kendrick Lamar. What if he drops an album, you know, let's say a physical copy. And, you know, back in the day, of course, we had the physical copies where we can go in the store, we can rip off the wrapper, we can, you know, take the book out, we can flip through the book, you know, and the book will have certain, you know, arts and pictures and things of that nature. Yeah. That's what, what it's going to become. So if we can get to a point where we can audibly hear without hearing, per se, it's going to go into a space where, again, say Kendrick drops the album next year, it will just be an album, but it won't be music, per se. The music right. is going to come from the visual that's stimulating more specifically, right? The cerebral cortex um, that's going to give you the music intuitively. So everybody's going to filter the music differently predicated on the visual. Now, you know, again, we're, we're speaking, you know, 10, 15, you know, 20 years down the line. Um, but we got to, you know, begin to understand, like, using that example as the visual becoming the music without any music per se, um, we got to begin to understand that that visual is going to initiate thoughts. And, you know, what scientists, you know, haven't really came out, um, you know, mainstream yet is that thoughts um, are concentrated within the chromosomes of the neurons um, because thoughts actually initiate neurons to synthesize proteins. And for those who know how the body works, of course, proteins um, are an extension of amino acids. Amino acids come together to build proteins. So, you know, that is a level of speech through visual, visual, visual conception, looking at something, developing a thought, that thought stimulating the neurons, the neurons synthesizing protein. And now that you have um, you know, thoughts synthesizing protein via the neurons, we got to remember again, proteins come uh, by way of amino acids, but amino acids come by way of what we talked about earlier, the triplet codons. So right. you're now manipulating the sequence of the codons predicated on optical visual art uh, by conceptualizing music through intuition which then develops your physical body back to its original sequence, which is what I spoke about earlier, the natural harmonic sequence, which is that four, three, 64, and 22, which are the numbers that denote a natural harmonic sequence that the sun speaks. So, you know, I just, you know, and oh, let me not forget. Um, you know, of course we see- uh, Can I ask something real quick? Please do. Yes, I wanted to show you that this is what changes it right here. This is the uh, this is the uh, this is what this is the game changer, right? This is what it brings is. people. Absolutely. This is what puts visuals over sound beds and changes the DNA right here. Absolutely, absolutely, you know, absolutely. Now you could feel you could feel colors. You could. Here you could you could you could feel from afar, you could feel from a distance, you could you could do many things through this now. This is gonna it, it's part of people's uh, it scans your eyes and whatnot, so it's 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 you know it's gonna manipulate the optics, mm -hmm. and people are gonna be able to change and shift their DNA through those devices, virtual, augmented, spatial, and then. The new feel, like you said, feeling music is the haptic suit, the Wooger mm. vest. I got it upstairs, right? Exactly. So when you put the Wooger vest on, that's what the gamers use. It's a gamer vest. But when you plug it into the music, if you plug it into the speaker, 
or if you in a studio and you plug it on, you know what I mean? If you plug it up, you're going to feel the music now through your body. So that's actually um, a party that we're putting together, a listening experience called Purple Sprite, you know? Mm. And it's mm. going to have, yeah, it's going to mm. be actually about the feeling of the music rather than it, it will. The music will be through the headphones, not all around you and everything. And you will have mm -hmm. the feeling of the haptic along with the feeling of the, uh, the, the, my, what the mycelium does is it creates yeah. a body where the senses are quote unquote, all of the senses, as well as the six is now magnified magnified that's powerful yeah yeah the music becomes food it becomes food and yeah. um you know you said feeling the music feeling the music you know because energy. energy so when we talk about feeling um you know we're of course talking about you know magnetism and uh, for those, and I've said this in the past, for those who really want to develop feeling or, you know, understand how to feel, because, you know, compassion is key. You know, when you see the baby who's being killed over in, uh, you know, yeah. uh, you know, dealing with Palestine trip. and all of that, like, you know, the wars that are taking place with Israel, right. um, even down to the homeless person on the corner, you feel a certain level of compassion. But what you're feeling is your heart is initiating a center of gravity in it, which then you become the center of gravity of the earth, which then you become the center of gravity of the sun, the solar system. And now you're, you know, in alignment per se. That's what compassion really is. Because like I've said in the past, you can't even say compassion without saying compass. And the compass is relative to magnetism. So when you follow compassion, you're naturally on your trajectory relative to the right. natural harmonic sequence that I was speaking about because your codons are predicated on that 4, 3, 64, and 22 uh, code. So when you run with compassion, that's feeling, right? But you can naturally do that mechanically as we speak through whether it's breath work or, you know, um, whether it's just, you know, tapping into sexual alchemy and things of that nature. But breath work specifically, um, you know, when you double your breaths, when you take more inhales and exhales, um, Perfect example, you know, those who ever came across the image of the eye of Heru with the fractions, the one over two, the one over four, the one over eight, the one over 16, the one over 32, the one over 64. Yes. Um, for for example, when you see the one over four, that's four inhales and one exhale. So it's. And so what's happening in the body when you do that, when you double the breaths, is that your. Um, you're, you're converting nitrate into nitric oxide um, and you're initiating vasodilation. Vasodilation is when the blood vessels open up to allow blood to the surface of the skin. And when that happens, doubling the breaths, allowing blood to come to the surface of the skin, blood serves as an antenna for magnetism. So that way you could feel for things. You see, so when you see them in Kemet on the walls holding their hands up to certain individuals, they're doubling their breaths to generate blood to the surface of the palm of the hand so that way they can feel for a person. This is the science of the Reiki, you know, and all of these things. Um, you know, so uh, feeling is, it, it's, it's a powerful piece. And I'll even do you one better, Red, because you were speaking about the uh, glasses. You know, um, again, music is going to go into another space completely. I, 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 again, theorize that, you know, albums are going to be dropped to where there are going to be locations. It's not going to be something you can stream anymore. You got to physically get in the car and go to a location because this location is almost going to be equivalent to what Jay-Z has in Brooklyn, where it's a whole museum, right? right? right. So it will be artifacts, it will be pictures, it will be pieces. it will be an entire experience. It's so an experience. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so no. So for you to listen to the album, um, it will be a whole, you know, mu museum of music. It will be a whole experience. Uh, say you're in there for about an hour, but it's all relative to the feeling that you're having predicated on what you're experiencing, what you're filtering through your consciousness and developing music through the experience alone. Um, so, you know, again, sound is going to go into another spectrum. And, you know, again, the idea is to begin to refine the body in such a way that you allow the DNA 
to become a transducer, meaning it taps into the information that's unseen. Um, you allow the brain to become a transducer, meaning again, it taps into the unseen world. Um, you allow the heart to feel, which is, you know, compassion. You allow the physical body to become literally an antenna for things that you inherently wouldn't have felt uh, prior to refining the body. And refining the body, again, can come by way of doubling the breaths. It can, of course, come by way of changing the way that you eat more electric foods in the body. It comes again by way of putting your bare feet in the grass, like me and Red spoke about uh, back in 2020 when we held our lectures. Um, you know, but refining the body also comes by way of overcoming certain, um, you know, in, uh, certain, uh, you know, characteristics that you may have predicated on keeping you held down. So whether it's guilt, like we spoke about on YouTube, whether it's you know, um, you know, jealousy, all these certain archetype or characteristics that we tend to run into, um, you know, refining the body comes by way of having the courage to get through some of these humps. So, you know, we have to move into a space where, you know, we no longer become stagnant, predicated on not knowing what's going on in the world. So that's what me and Red are doing is that we're laying out a blueprint and we're seeing what's happening with Kanye West. We see what's happening with Diddy. We see what's happening, um, you know, with uh, what's her face? Wendy Williams. Um, you know, we see all this turmoil that's going on in the world, but as above, so below. And, and, and we are big players in this narrative. So once we can understand what we're seeing, then we can properly get ourselves in position to move in accordance with the cosmic narrative. So that way we don't fall behind based on not knowing what we're seeing. Um, one thing I want to speak on too, again, because I'm going to highlight this in the lecture on the 22nd in reference to the Rothschild and its connection uh, with the deity, the Sumerian deity or God named Nimrod. Um, one key point that I want to hit on is that, um, you know, the Rothschild had a bank. They had actually a European hedge fund called Nimrod, Diversified Holdings, N-E-M-R-O-D. It wasn't spelled N-I-M-R-O-D, which is what it's spelled in Sumeria, but it was spelled N-E-M-R-O-D, Nimrod Diversified Holdings. Um, so that is another key piece that we're going to add on on the 22nd in reference to, again, Rothschild not only just dying per se, but dying predicated on a sound that we're going to now move into based on what, you know, we talk about, uh, you know, telepathy and things of that nature, but in a lecture alone with telepathy and speaking without being audible through the mouth, we're going to get into that science because it's all based on genetics and switching up the coding within the DNA in order to adhere to sound that we can't hear through the uh, ears, like, you know, in a, reg in a regular situation. So, um, you know, that that's that's going to be a key piece. And and I feel like, um, you know, like I said, a lot of this that is going on in the world that is unveiling or that is revealing itself is all based on the conjunction of the sun in reference to the earth and all these solar flares that are going off. So I, I don't want to give too much in this one. Like I said, you know, uh, the words aren't enough. You know, we, we need visuals and we need um, videos for you to really internalize um, what's being said. So, you know, with that, um, Red, you know, that's 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 what I want to give them. Um, and, you know, I'm going I'm to finish out toward the end. Indeed, indeed. Definitely. Uh, make sure. All right. First and foremost, uh, make sure y'all clap it up for the good brother for pulling up and dropping the information and, uh, you Drop know, always on, adding man. something new to his lexicon. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> uh, yeah. The bomb, yeah, the yeah. yeah like he said, it, life is about visualizing these days. I gotta hear that bomb in y'all head just go off. You feel me? But yeah, the brother definitely came and dropped the whole bomb. Um, 322 make sure y'all are in the building i just dropped the link for the eventbrite please if you can't pull up 
send somebody. You feel me? Because we are going to be going in. 322 is a significant day in the history of Red Pill, Blue Pill, A.A. Rashid, the whole community. That Blueprint 322 is our classic lecture. That is the day that we are going to be bringing to y'all culture, uh, vulture culture, right? The flip on culture vulture. And we are going to unpack everything that you see taking place right now, this whole epoch that we're entering into, all of these flares, all of these changes, all of the quantum quickening, you name it, you dig? So I'm going to continue. Uh, I got a few slides that I'm going to share with the family. Uh, we might as well keep the party going, right? You know, and, uh, and, 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 and carry on tradition. You know what I'm saying? So let's get into it, right? As you can see, since we last linked up, you know what I mean? Things have been going on. Very, uh, uh, the underworld has been lit. You know what I mean? The dark side of the moon has been on fire. You know what I'm talking about? So we got the solar flares popping off, right? The solar flares is popping off in a whole, in a trinity, right? The sun officially is awake in this new era, in this 2024 cycle that we're in. The sun is showing you that it's active, Right? And with the sun exploding and with the sun taking off, right, that it basically uh, took this person right here uh, <laughs> into a place where he probably needed to go a very long time ago. What is the significance of Jacob Rothschild's death? What is the significance not only of him, but what is the significance of the uh, the other people that you see? We'll go and we'll pull that up in a minute. But you have. Uh, the Pope and, and looking like, you know, he's a few, uh, you know what I mean? Like he's hanging on to his last threads. Then you have the king, not just king of Britain. I mean, not the king of the quote unquote crown or whatnot. This is the king of colonies all around the world. King Charles, who happens to be born on November the 14th which happens to be the same day that me and Blue Pill are born on. And he happens to be a scorpion king. And this man happens to have his hands in every single type of uh, program that you see that's dealing with population reduction, anything that you see going on with, um, you know, uh, the, the, the trafficking of human beings and children, all type of thing. I mean, these people's hands are in all type of shit. This man right here belongs to a family of not just financiers and whatnot, but basically the quote unquote aristocrats beyond what an aristocrat is, because aristocrats are the families that help build the cities and whatnot. Right. They're the ones who come along who deal with things like the structure of a whole city and whatnot. Those are the aristocratic families. No, these are the finances, the funders and the quote unquote big homies. In the, in the, you know, the top dogs of that world. You know what I mean? This is the bank. So it is of no coincidence that the day he makes transition, that the crypto begins to go crazy and whatnot. And you see the beginning of the bull run. He represents the Federal Reserve. He represents Jekyll Island. He represents centralized. He represents the quote unquote cabal, right? This whole, this, this, there's, there's a, if there were an op that people wanted to, if they wanted to recognize that there is an op, that op would be the gangsters and the banksters, okay? Who all are the same people, okay? The gangsters and the banksters, part of one mafia, part of one quote-unquote cabal, the centerpiece of what it is that we're speaking of. This man said he is the father of is it real? Father. Right. Israel was created when he was alive. He him more so than anybody else in his family was the one who laid that foundation, laid those bricks. When you look when you're looking at Israel, you're not looking at what they sold you on and what they told you on and what you've been lied to about. You're looking at a creation of a banking cartel, but not just a banking cartel, 
a, a cartel that funds all wars, all conflicts, has their hands in every single illegal activity on levels that is that is considered to there's nothing above them. Black they're above BlackRock. You know? They would be above BlackRock. So this domino has fallen. Happens to be that every other month, one of those other dominoes are going to fall again. They're continuing to fall. It was Elizabeth. First, it was her. It was her husband, right? Philip, coincidentally. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? So they got there's a there's a Philip over there, and then the Charles is born on our birthday, huh? Come on now, and he's the Scorpion King. He's the false king. He's the false. He's the uh, he's the antichrist on that side, right? That's just weird. But anyway, he has cancer of the, I believe it was the um, yeah. He has he yeah. They said that he's on berries and juices and whatnot. Then they had the other person in Belgium, the queen, step down and abdicate the throne. So yeah, my dude Kanye West, head of the Vulture Society, right? Once again, came out as number one for another week. Managing to beat out a young upstart by the name of Yeet, right? Rightfully so. So with the help of other vultures, Right, especially getting next to the one and the only Playboy Cardi, right? Who, unbeknownst to many parents in the audience, is the uh he's like the he's he's the head of the younger generation. You know, he has him on the, you know, I know they got NBA Young Boy and everything, but the Playboy Cardi wave is a little bit different. Uh it's a little bit darker and it's it's gothic. You know, it's gothic meets designer meets, you know, some hood shit. It's what they're in, you know, it's, it's that wave that you see the children gravitating to uh, heavy metal aesthetics, you know, what we call aesthetic nihilism. But they're taking it even as further and they're tapping into that joker. They're tapping into what we would call the dark tetrad, the dark triad. They're tapping into the anti-hero they're tapping into the dark forces. They're tapping into, you know, you know, my what he said. These ain't no off whites. These are no Sorachis. They tapping into that type of shit. Right. You know? They tapping into that. And the person who basically keep in mind, mushrooms and, and certain things grow from a certain type of fertilizer, right? And if there was somebody who fertilized or who fertilized the terra firma, because the terra firma is the environment, right? DNA responds to environment, but the terra firma is the environment, and the environment changes with the with the um with the written word. The the written word is powerful enough, not just the written word, but the written and the spoken word on a sound bed, which would be in our days and times rap or rappers. So Biggie Smalls came along and terraformed not just Brooklyn, but he terraformed a whole lot of terra firma with words because he started creating shit out of words, right? But the architect behind that 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 power was this man right here, P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Sean Combs. Y'all know him better as Brother Love, right? And people think that person behind him and this picture that I have in front of y'all is uh, Heath Ledger. No, that's P. Diddy as the Joker. You know? But now, the same... Go ahead. No, I just wanted to add to the flip on the Vulture as well, because, you know, we tend uh, to look at it uh, from the perspective of dark, per se, you know, because me right. and Red are going to yeah. deliver it both ways. But... On the flip side of it, you know, as we can look in antiquity, 
uh, you know, and say we look at King Tut, for example, or, you know, beyond King Tut, a lot of our ancestors um, had the emblem of the vulture, um, you know, on their, on their, uh, you know, protruding right. from their forehead, yeah. right? Um, okay. So, and we look at that and we're like, all right, so, you know, what does a vulture denote in nature, right? Because, you know, of course they study nature and they personified uh, nature um, because they understood it's a force that we can internalize as an archetype to play out. So what does a vulture mean, you know, on the flip side, right? Because we see a lot of collapse going on, but simultaneously there's a rise that's going on as well. And vultures specifically, and it's interesting because I even came across an article a couple of days ago saying that the vulture is going extinct. Yeah. Um, which is interesting. That's it. It runs <laughs> right. in synonymous with what we're what we're talking about. But you know, with right. that being said, uh, you know, the vulture specifically, the actual animal itself, utilizes thermodynamics in reference to heat from the sun right. uh, to become airborne. Right. You know. So you know, the vulture needs the sun, right? So again, going back to what I was referencing. Uh, about the Tower of Babel, you know, and, and raising ourselves to a point or a frequency where we're no longer using the English language to communicate, we're using the mind. No words are being said. So, you know, at the same time, there's a collapse that's happening. There's a rise that's going on as well. And that is in conjunction of the solar flares that are coming in via the atmosphere. So, you know, the elevation, yeah, that takes place with a vulture as well. But again, it's utilized through thermal, thermodynamics or heat. And that's internally what is going on within the body when we acquiesce to heat that is coming from the sun. More specifically, this sun. I'm not talking about 2023 sun. I'm not talking about 2022 right. sun. I'm talking about 2024 sun. Blue so sun. You, the, blue, the sun. blue sun, right, the blue sun. So, you know, again... When we're looking at how, you know, Kanye West is aesthetic is more of a, you know, darker side. Um, when we're looking, you know, at uh, a lot of these, you know, rappers who are going more of the, uh, you know, um, gothic, you know, appeal. Uh, it has a deeper metaphysical meaning to it, you know. And like Red said, Bobby Hemmings spoke about a lot of it. It's chaos magic. Yes. Um, and it's, it's utilizing the unseen reality, the self-engineer your reality by understanding the mechanics of the physical medium. And like I said prior to, the physical medium is just the triple blackness. It's the unseen reality. Yes. So we're going to get to a point where we're communicating again through, and I, you know, the word telepathy is used so much. I'm going to, you know, I got to, you know, I'm going to come with another word other right. than telepathy, but, right. but, you know, but what I'm saying is, you know, we're, we're going to get to a place where we'll be able to, you know, self-engineer the triple darkness or the chaos, you know, that we can't see in order to communicate, you know, uh, with somebody clear across the world. So I just, I just wanted to highlight, you know, both perspectives when it comes to the vulture and, um, you know, our ascension protocol, you know, in 2024. Definitely. But you got to remember, that's why around the world, they pick up on our frequency because of our chaos magic. You don't got to speak English. If you in Africa and you pick up on our energy, you know what I'm talking about? You like, yeah, I fucks with them. That's my people right there. You know, you feel us from afar. You know, that's why people want to come over here and they want to be amongst us. And they want to find out, yo, who they, you know, what's up with these people? Yo, I want to be, they want to live around, they want to be around us. The whole thing with the migrants is a whole conversation in and of itself, right? But I'll just say it like this. That's the best thing that could ever happen to us in a very, very long time. Very, very long time. I shit you not. These migrants are coming from countries first and foremost, that are not, quote unquote, uh, these are these are these are countries that are bo uh, booming economically. They have a lot of potential. And if they're not considered to be rich countries, we live in a day and age where your eyeballs are money. OK, you don't need to be rich to become wealthy in this paradigm that we're in. So. 
people coming to America from Venezuela, from Ecuador, and all of that, they're lit where they come from. Keep that in mind. They are, they're somebody where they come from. And where they come from is a marketplace. So they're entrusting somebody in America to treat their people, their mans in them, right? Their homies with some respect and give them a chance. And that's where we come in because one thing that we need in our movement, I can't speak for nobody else. I can only speak for what we're doing. We need sweat equity and labor. You understand? And sweat equity and labor is not necessarily, uh, I, I can't necessarily say I'm going to be, uh, no, I go to Fiverr when I need people to do things for me. I have overseas virtual assistants. I feed villages in Bangladesh with about $20. I, I, I got people in Africa that's lit right now just from doing a $5 transaction with them. So we live in a gig economy. And what we need to do is we need to put our resources together and start putting other people to, to work so their sweat equity and their labor could begin to build up some of the things that we need for our people so we could stop feeling like victims and complaining about what somebody's not doing for us when they came here to see what was to us. They try, they they thought that they was going, you know, they thought shit was, you know, not, like we had solutions, like we could use their 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 hands or we could use their work because they're not denying any work. You got homeless people. Some of them are not denying any work, but some of them be denying work. So I think the migrant thing is a plus It's it's pluses and minuses to everything. I, th I, f I don't think I know that China sent their army over here because they own assets in America. And those assets happen to have birth certificates, social security cards, 401ks, licenses, and everything. That, th th that Those assets are owned by another entity. And I do feel like those entities have sent their armies into America and those armies are trained they're waiting, they're sleeper cells, and they're armed. <clears throat> they have the ability to be armed. And yeah, that, that's kind of part of it. And keep in mind, remember, they was buying empty buildings. The different countries own a lot of that real estate that's empty sitting around, like that building in LA with all the graffiti on it. There, there's a lot of overseas Chinese. Uh, look, all of these countries where the migrants is coming from, what are they doing? They're taking them off of their land and taking the minerals from that land. It's all about extracting minerals for the EV race and this whole thing right now. So America brokers deals with corrupt governments and things of that nature. They move people off of the land because they need the land in order to take the minerals, in order to take the riches and whatnot, in order to pillage and, and, and extract. So they say to them, look, as long as they come through the side of the door, which is the border, and they got their paperwork because they're citizens and they could prove that they're citizens and they have a nationality, we got to take care of them. We good. This is America. America is like an Airbnb to um, Europeans and because and, and, they the aliens and um, they the real migrants. They the ones who came up in this bitch and actually took it. But because their treaties are coming up, Right. Their treaties are running. The, the time for the treaties is coming up. They they remember they gave back Oklahoma half of it to Indians recently. You don't think in the age of AI that there's some savvy morals and whatnot or some people who know how to use the AI for research that will show a whole laundry list of how many treaties these people have dishonored and how much in default they are like they they would rather bankrupt the country, sink it, go into their bunkers and whatnot, uh, sabotage this shit and do a whole bunch of things that any, like if, if, if you kick squatters out, if you get some rambunctious squatters and whatnot, and they know that they got to leave their house soon, that they're squatting in, they're going to destroy the house. What you think America is to these people? This is your house. This is your, your cat. This is your paradise. This is your land of the riches. All of this is yours. 
Mm-hmm. And as AI gets more smarter with biotech, the genealogy thing with biotech, do you know how advanced they already are in biotech? They can heal you from afar. That's a fact. And then too, because and, and real quick, Red, because um, yes, yes, we're going to speak too uh, about, and I'm going to bring up, you know, the Rothschilds and, and their level of suppression of technology and how advanced we really are, you know, right. because they want to create this illusion of scarcity, you know, as right. if, you know, the planet doesn't produce oil naturally, you know what I'm saying? Or, you right, know, right. Uh, electricity right. isn't in there that we can- Or the diamonds. Know, the diamonds, you know. Right. The, the planet itself makes diamonds. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like there's minerals that are abundant, but you know, because of the fact that the Rothschilds create this illusion of scarcity and, you know, develop this, you know, uh, private, you know, uh, uh, credit debt uh, security through, uh, you know, fiat notes, we tend to think that there's a limited supply when we all know it's common knowledge that money is printed. You know, so with the Rothschilds dying, we're moving into, again, a system of, you know, an open system, per se, right. where natural resources, you know, will become a thing um, and utilize and even bartering, per se. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be about not only relationships, but being able to have an intellectual property that's predicated on the knowledge of technology, but using it in a way that is conducive for the greater good. So when we're talking about minerals and the earth producing diamonds, you know, are are we going to have the capacity to know how to utilize the diamonds? Is it going to be bigger than just wearing on our necks or on our finger? Like, are we going to know that diamonds are electrically conductive? Are we going to know that we can put together something that is made up of diamonds in order to charge, say, the house, you know, to generate free electricity so we're no longer paying a bill per se? Or, you know, are we going to have the intellectual property know how to know how to use gold, um, whether it's in the body or whether it's out the body? Can we put something together to where we can, you know, know how to commune with the ancestors on a much higher level relative to the science of electromagnetism? It, it, you know, again, it's just about knowing how to utilize this technology, but you know, it's, 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 it's common uh, knowledge for a few that know that, you know, the Rothschilds, the Bilderbergers, um, the DuPonts, you know, they all had this technology, but it's suppressed, you know, again, because they want to create the illusion of scarcity, but, you know, um, you know, the natural resources are here and that's a lot of what the technology is, is ran off today. Right. Definitely. And, (laughs) You know, it just so happens if those materials come from places that where you domicile and where you come from, then you're part of that. You're part of that technology as well. You know, you're part because you part of that dirt. You know what I mean? You come from that same earth. That same terra firma is from whence you came and whence you go back to. You know, And, and that's a fact. That's another thing that we'll speak on as well is, you know, the advancement of the body um, itself, because like I've said before, you know, and as we should all know by now, you know, that the body is the highest form of technology, you know. So when you have the capacity to know how the body works um, in conjunction to say technology, um, you know, you're better fit for this new world that we're moving into. Um and it, it, you know, it, it's just a thing where we got to begin to push the needle forward in information. You know, uh, Brother Red is talking about, you know, utilizing, um, you know, the immigration uh, and, and coming in contact with individuals clear across the world that are moving over here, you know, who may have, you know, the ability to create an influence. You know, because the minute they go big over here, by default, they're going to be big from where they came from. Right. So now just imagine linking up with these individuals. You get lit with them or whatever. 
And then all of a sudden, not only are you big from where you came from, but the people that you're connected with from overseas are going back home and saying, yo, like this brother Red and put me on. Like they're going to their family members. They're talking about you. You know what I'm saying? And we're creating a bridge between here and there. And, and again, it's all about advancement. You know, we're thinking about like the Nazis. When we're thinking about like, for example, Russia, the Soviet Union, like all of these places, you know, way back when in the early thirties, we're dealing with technology that supersedes anything that we can far see. Advanced, today. Right. Far you know, advanced. Far, far advanced. So, you know, um, when w this, this, this idea of, you know, merging the physical body with technology, um, you know, is, 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 is a thing where, you know, we, we don't need to necessarily acquiesce to because we don't need to put machine in the body. You know, the idea is to understand right. that the body is conducive enough to interact with the technology outside of it. But then again, like I said, utilize it in a way that's conducive, um, you know, for us. So. Yes. Definitely. Uh, let me get back to this keynote right here. Hold on. Make sure we got the sound on this thing. Share sound. Boom. Y'all are right in the building. Press one if you already got your ticket for 322. Press one if you already got your ticket for 322. When I wake up, I want to be able to call I'll keep it on up tomorrow and give him an impressive number on how many people done got tickets because he gonna ask me. So please don't embarrass me. You feel me? <laughs> I want to be able to tell the brother, yeah, man, they was out there. They, they, they was they going to be in the building, man. Let's lock in. Let's do our thing because the people want us to deliver. They can't wait till we give them this meal on 322. So this is the quote unquote how many people have been to Germany before in the building? I just want to know if anybody is familiar with this motif right here and you either come from Germany or you visited, you feel me, or you follow them as a football team or whatever, uh, soccer, okay? So the way that... That's the Nazi eagle. Well, they would call it the Nazi ego, but prior to the Nazi party, what was it? Right? These things existed before the Nazi party. Okay? So we're talking about a Germany in a time where melanated people had some authority there. Right? We're also talking about a Germany that wasn't as white as the Germany that you may see today. So when Ye stepped out and he started representing this whole thing with vultures, remember, he didn't even make an announcement when he popped back on the scene and he was gone for a while. He just had a, a um, he was in the Middle East with a shirt that said vultures on it, you know, and that, that got people to talking because once again, as a visual artist, he understands that you don't have to say anything. You just let your clothes do the talking, right? Because your clothes it's called design language. Your, your your clothes have a philosophy attached to it just based off of the way that you put it together. And as an artist, it is what you say that it is, right? And that's what he exemplifies to a T. And there's many others like him. And I, I would encourage others um, who are getting into the music business to consider, you know, being artists, not just musicians or rappers and whatnot, or, or employees, be artists. You know, so the vulture in ancient Kemet is sacred. OK, the vulture in ancient Kemet is sacred. I live on top of a mountain out here in Georgia and whatnot. I have vultures and I got falcons all around me. Right. When the deer or the roadkill, it's a lot of roadkill where I'm at. It's, it's a lot of roadkill. It's more. I see a lot more roadkill these days than ever before. But. It's the vultures in Georgia, out here in Atlanta that come down and take care yeah. of all of that. You know? Natural progressions. So I wanted to show you this, right? That this is um, a, a, pic a pictograph of the largest landowners. 
in the United States, right? The Emerson, they have 2,330,000 acres. It's the Emerson family in California, Oregon, Washington, right? Red Emerson's company, Sierra Pacific Industry, is the largest private lumber production firm in the United States. They own 14 different sawmills across the country, right? So the trees, right, that they do not, they're, they're, these are not, this, these, these trees are ancestral trees. These trees were here long before they got here, right? So they're on this land getting rich off of this land, right? In the same places that they just got. A few hundred years ago, Oregon, Washington, California. We were talking 1800s, right? And, and just recently got their shit together. So to show you the wealth of the land that you're on and the fact that if you tapped into 1% of that land, you would not be intimidated when migrants started coming over here. You would be like, well, God damn it. Uh, shit, I got 2 million acres. I'm going to put them on 100 acres and we're going to build a whole community out and whatnot. And they finna be a labor force, workforce, or I'm going to, we're going to educate them. And those will be the quote unquote students and whatnot of both healthy living. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to extract information that they have because people coming from China and people come from India and people coming from Africa and you're on a quest of you going over there to find out certain things. Why you just don't run up on them and find out from them? So China is the place where all the factories and the production is taking place. So why not pull up on somebody who came over here that was from China and be like, yo, plug me in with these factories, fam. What's the, what's the one, you know, let's go FaceTime them right now. You know, one hand wash the other. What can I do for you? And this is what you could do for me. So because they have us living in lack, there's going to be a civil war. And because they have us living in a place where we feel like, you know, we, you know, we don't even know how big this goddamn country is. We don't even think we got permission to go outside of these fake lines that they've drawn around for us. And these fake perimeters and these don't go through the sundown town, cousin. You know, it's going to be dark. No, nigga, this is, you know, you are, a, I'm a global citizen. I'm a global citizen. <laughs> my sights are ever reaching. Like I, I see all borders. Like I'm a globe. I see myself everywhere. And I know that we are owed a lot of this land that we are quote unquote burying our loved ones in. These lands that people are shedding their blood for, uh, city blocks and whatnot. When you hold estate owners, you, you're supposed to be having estates, acreage, right? So here you go, Texas and Montana. He owns the Los Angeles Rams, Denver Nuggets, Colorado Avalanche, Colorado Rapids, and Arsenal FC Premier League, right? Wagoner Ranch includes 300 acres of farmland, several creeks, more than 1,000 productive oil wells, hundreds of horses, and thousands of cattle. Now, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna hate on nobody's land acquisition. However, what I'm telling you is, there was a day and time when there was people who looked like us who had more than this land, right? And there's a whole lot of people who have, uh, there's a whole lot of people who look like us, right? whose paperwork don't say Negro or Black on it, and they have land like that. There's people's grandparents who had estates that were very vast. When we had our confederations and whatnot, and when we had our tribes, we had vast land as well. So it was what they saw you in the, what they showed you in the movie Trading Places. These people have now trading places. Look, he owns the Los Angeles Rams, the Denver Nuggets, the Colorado Avalanche, the Colorado Rapids, and the Arsenal, right? So 
if me if 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 I if this let's say there are five families, right? If it's five of us and we go and get a compound, I go and holler at the acre boys and I tell the acre boys, yo, we're gonna we need about five acres. You know what I mean? We put some money together, you know. It it's kind of it's kind of it, it, it's giving struggle, you know what I mean? If five people only getting five acres, but hey, you gotta start somewhere, right? So I get five acres from them. We raise up. Remember, this is five families. And once you get on your own land, chances are you're going to start having more progeny than you did when your ass lived in the projects or when you lived in a concrete or when you lived in a concrete jungle. There's a limit. You got apartments. You know what I mean? They, they the size of closets and whatnot. But when you got acreage and land and you living on farm and you growing things, and you have what is known as produce, then you tend to reproduce, right? When you have production, you tend to reproduce. So when our people were working in Detroit and they were on the assimilar lines and they were producing things in production and whatnot, they were baby booms in these places like Detroit, all of all of the all of the factory cities. The baby boom happened because black men were producing. They were in, they were in production mode. They were working factories. They was building shit, bro. So the Wiz was like, "I'm gonna reproduce that man. That's a real man right there. That's a real provider." You know what I'm talking about? And prior to just that, we had our own cities, our own towns. We had a lot of stuff. We are going back to that. I'm just showing you this stuff. To show you what's coming to our people, how much is old. This is why these people would be like, we would rather flood the border before we give this shit back. Hell to the nah. We're gonna tie, we're gonna tie these people up into arguing and whatnot. We're gonna keep dropping breadcrumbs of this migrant, this, this migrant that, this migrant did this, and this migrant did that. And then people are gonna become vigilantes. They're gonna pass a bill where they're gonna arm New Yorkers and whatnot, and they're gonna they're gonna seed a, a civil war, and people are gonna be like, "How did that happen?" And you just sat right through it. Thank you very much. That's my name. That's right. Are you not ashamed? You're exploiting okay. sexual violence right, we're gonna, for your own we're political gonna stop. gain. We're gonna You're not fooling I'm anyone. You've done it. this before. Yeah. You've and exploited you know and weaponized Why sexual violence in Libya, so in Libya, to exploit sexual violence in Libya. That we can't get him to no open. U.S. militarization and instability in Libya. You're doing that again to justify genocide in Gaza. I co-sign all of that right there. You can't give them no peace. Now that people know what they know, it it may it, it does no justice if everybody's like, who's on the Epstein list? If you're not going to take that and become a disruptor with that. Anywhere that those people are speaking, anywhere where they're showing up, anywhere where they're trying to cast a spell and indoctrinate and put some new people underneath some goddamn spells, they are to be disrupted with just the truth. Wherever they go, you just, people need to just show up and just and just disrupt them with the truth. Don't be violent. Don't be arrogant. I didn't. I'm not co-signing any type of criminal behavior, none whatsoever. So I have to say that to just you know make sure that nobody gets anything misconstrued and whatnot. You know they out here. They got they got the they got your master teachers on trial and shit. Niggas is in Supreme Court. We got we got to tread lightly out here. You know what I mean? But no, hell to the no, no, no. Shut her down. You know what I'm talking about? Fuck that. Shut her down. That's like somebody going to dunk the ball and get their shit smacked in mid-flight. Shut them down. You better not let Hillary, you better not let Hillary Clinton pull up in your goddamn college and put them feminists underneath a motherfucking Kill Bill spell. They gonna be out here swacking shit, man. You know what I mean? They they these people are indoctrinating people, and as you can see, anybody could be a victim. 
You know, no one is safe. Man, woman, a child. Which takes me to our next guest of the evening, Brother Love. All right. This one right here. Okay. This one right here. You know, Cassie was just the beginning, right? His, 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 his quote unquote karma is coming threefold, right? It's coming threefold. The men, women, and now, and then the children and whatnot. So first it was the woman with Cassie. Now it's the man. Okay. And then it's the child. So his dirty laundry is beginning to quote unquote come out and it's being shown that this man has uh, footage and evidence and receipts to show and prove into what they call in these streets, stand on business. That whatever he say about Sean Combs, a.k.a. Brother Love, is right and exact. They, they call this in the streets a motherfucking head crack, okay? And in Vegas, they call it a checkmate, right? Got his ass. Got him. 75 pages is the report. I couldn't get through the whole shit. I promise you. I was like, take that, take that. I had to go ahead and uh, sanitize my hands. You feel me? Meek Mill is getting caught up in that. Your boy Ursha, they had to drop this shit after the Super Bowl because this nigga Ursha would have been shaky on them skates. This is a, this shit is ether. This shit is ether. Okay, because one thing is peeing on uh, young Cassie, you know what I'm saying? You know, that's one thing. But you out here, you know, use a teenager, bussy ninja turtle, you know what I'm talking about? You was out here on some vampire shit. You was Van Lathan. You know what I'm talking about? Tweak it. Me Yo, Mika's on Twitter tweaking right now. It's ugly to see. He's tweaking. You know, in the Kung Fu flicks, they got this hit where you walk 100 feet, right? Or you make 100 steps and then you die. Yeah, that's what this right here is. Because, like I said, for anybody that could get through the seven, you got to be into horrorcore and all kind of gay porn and other things to get through the whole 75 pages. So I need my deep sea divers who go into septic tanks to go ahead and decode that one for me. You know what I mean? Run that through a uh, ratchet GPT and see what comes back. Because the, the report is, is salacious. It's crazy. This nigga right here is crazy. Check him out. Savage! I'm a savage! Oh! I'm a savage! Whatever I want, I'm going to get! Whatever I want, I have to get! So some breaking news. I just landed in Dubai. I'm not only in Brazil, but we've got to get into this crazy stuff that is going on. P. Diddy guys has just been hit with another major lawsuit for the first time from a man. Things are about to go crazy. Hey guys, it's Marvin Marley. Hopefully you guys are all doing well today. Back at again with another video. If you have not subscribed, click that button. It is daily and consistent content. Comment down below. Give this video a thumbs up and let's get into this mess because a lot is going down. But it looks like this is a lot guys. Brace yourselves. Rodney Jones is a former producer and videographer for Diddy and is alleging that Mr. Combs touched him on multiple occasions. Whew. Diddy would walk around naked, grab his um, private parts and fondle his back passage and call it horseplay. Jones claims that he also received multiple advances from, from others at Diddy's requests. According to TMZ, who are breaking this news, Jones says they never had SEX but feels that that's where things were going based on Diddy's actions. He says that Diddy even forced him to watch alleged footage of famed producer Stevie J having intercourse with a man. Oh my lord, Jesus, take the damn wheel and drive fast. Are you dumb? So sorry, guys. I didn't expect that last part. Niggas, he forced Stevie J, he forced him to watch a video of Stevie J having intercourse with a, with a man. So he's also, Stevie J has been implicated in this. Not Stevie J. The list of allegations is quite lengthy. It also includes being essayed by a cousin of Young Miami's. What? Huh? What? It includes being essayed by a cousin of young Miami's, prostitutes, drugs, possible R word, and touching, groping, and fondling from Cuba Good Jr. on Diddy's yacht. Cuba Gooding Jr. Trey. 
This is this is insane, guys. What on earth is going on here? Not Stevie. What? Stevie is Scorpio too. I gotta. I, I, sorry, I gotta read these um, legal documents. Trey didn't get out the car with Diddy though. <laughs> Diddy brought prostitutes to his house in Miami um, and on one occasion Jones said he was present at the house and he was drugged and possibly R-worded. He also alleged that several parties Diddy intentionally served women bottles of his tequila and vodka brands laced with drugs. There are more tawdry allegations including bringing underage girls to Diddy's home and providing them with alcohol. Jones claims Diddy directed Stevie J and his son Justin Combs to recruit prostitutes and in Justin's case he was instructed to find underage girls to attend the parties. What? Jones claims Diddy introduced him to Cuba Gooding Jr. on Diddy's yacht and Cuba allegedly began touching, groping and fondling Mr. Jones legs is his upper inner thighs near his groin the small of his back near his buttocks and his shoulders there are also allegations of a shooting where jones says diddy and his son got into a heated argument in an la recording studio jones says gunfire erupted and a man named g was hit and bleeding profusely from his stomach jones says diddy told him to lie to cops and say g was shot in a drive-by it's worth noting lapd investigated the shooting and reportedly found the victim had been shot outside as well in addition to diddy jones is suing justin other employees as well various record execs and according to the documents he seeking 30 million in damages holy lord have mercy what stevie j r worded uh, horseplay young miami's um peak cousin was involved prostitutes involved 30 million in damages this is the whole cassie situation happening all over again i'm dumbfounded shocked bamboozled at this lawsuit that i have just read i have just landed from a 15 hour flight tired as hell but i had to break this down for you and this is coming we this is coming from tmz guys tmz did he sued bruh bruh let, let me just go and drink some water what's your theory i know that's completely not true biggie and have no money conflicts with anybody and as far as my theory it would be inadequate for me to speculate i would just be like everybody else to speculate on who did this or why it was done i mean one thing i do know is that it was evil i don't know what to say when it comes yeah. to this lawsuit i'm genuinely shocked disgusted at the stuff that's come out this is insane insanity on the level of cassie's lawsuit he hasn't even finished the other ones and this is the first lawsuit come from a man that's come forth now things are about to get real now things are about to really pick up and people are going to find out what's going on Cuba Good Jr. is apparently involved. Young Miami's cousin is involved. So the Young Miami, does that her, her name is now being mentioned in these lawsuits. That is why she ran from Diddy and completely dissociated everything. But her name just being attached to this in any kind of way, she's not being accused of anything, is not good news for her at all in any capacity, guys. What the hell is going on here? I'm genuinely shocked. I have no idea what to say. I'm bamboozled. I'm hoodwinked. Um, R word, underage girls, underage. Excuse me, this is the first lawsuit coming with underage minors also not involved. Now we're touching on the territory of Epstein related stuff, Weinstein related stuff. This man is done. It's finished. This is a disgusting lawsuit that's come out. It's not very triggering for me. That's why I'm running through this lawsuit and this video very quickly because I'm just insane. <sighs> it was on purpose that I showed an Indian person speaking of it in such a way like that because I want y'all to know you know what pop mute what pop culture really is and we so cool because we know these artists or some of us grew up around these artists and we're so nonchalant but this is a global story this is a global epidemic this is a global culture with a global reach that has people looking at these stars in america like emperors like behemoths like gods american gods right and they worship beyond celebrity culture in some of these countries and to see the fall of p diddy and his falling taking others down with him and whatnot this is the symbolic fall of the quote-unquote clash of the titans or this is the symbolic fall of the gods for people who are watching the west fall right so Babylon truly is fallen because the emperor has no clothes, you know, whole body. And we don't even need to get into that. The Pope is failing and falling. 
the quote unquote Rothschild fell, that domino fell. The they don't have a replacement for King Charles, who's about to fall, right? And he has cancer, he's abdicating and whatnot. His replacement is not even uh that nigga is not even half cooked. He's not, he's nowhere to finish to be put out there like that. He's he's still in the oven. So all of these things are showing you not only is Babylon falling, the global Babylon is falling, right? That old God is, it, it, their day is here. This is what 2024 represents as the closing with this eclipse on the way, the X and whatnot. That is the chapter closing. That is the closing of the book. The same way that the Great Conjunction was the closing of the chapter, the same way that the Pluto return on 222 was the closing of a chapter and the beginning of a new one, right? That's where we are now. So this whole thing is coming to an end, right? What Puffy represented is what they call the shiny suit era, but they also called it, it's all about the Benjamins era, and they also called it the tunnel era. It's an aesthetic it's a sound. He changed the frequency and the sound. We invented the remix. We invented the remix. That's him right there. He invented, he made, he created the Mary J sound, the Jodeci sound, and then he gave you the Biggie sound with the total, with the 112, with the R&B and everything. Then he gave you the remixes and stuff like that. And then he gave you a whole bunch of other things in terms of aesthetics, nuances, but he also infused that metrosexual, um, you know, um, misogynistic, right? And that quote unquote, I would say that Wayne Grove energy, that 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 you know, that real sneaky, uh, uh you know, what I'm saying, um, psychopathic American psycho type of energy, and also the zestiness into the culture. He's a zesty funnel. Okay. Let's be let's be clear too. Like, you know, it, it not only did he, you know, because I mean, he, you know, he's the head, like you said, of this old paradigm. He's an architect. You know, this, this right, it's dying off. But you know, even with Diddy, it's gonna be a lot, you know, of people to come out. You know what I'm saying and be exposed because he's equivalent to you know, goddamn, you know, uh, the Epstein of the you know the rap culture right now. Yes. You know, and, um, you know, the way that he moved, uh, he damn near moved like the Chinese triad. Like he just, you know, but the level of power that he, you know, uh, you know, embezzled in, in that industry, you know, a lot That's of people. 30 year run. Right. Aren't speaking because of the amount of power. I mean, it said this nigga got like bodies. Right. You know, like he he's he's at the hands of even. A video had surfaced with the woman who was shot allegedly by Shine, but she was saying, right, you know, shot that, me. Right. That was Diddy that shot me. And they um, paid her to say Shine? Did she yeah, say that? Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, that I guess even, you know, the doctor who performed a uh, surgery on her after she was shot knew Diddy did it. Um, I guess the club owners were paid off, you know, uh to mm. not say that Diddy shot her. So uh yeah, it was like a lot of people paid off to cover cover that up, but it's like it's gonna it's gonna be a lot of that that's gonna come out, you know. Right, Cause uh, you, even my boy Scar, who was the one who threw the money at them, he said that he shot at him. He said it wasn't he he was getting mad at Sean because he was like, not only you taking the charge for this nigga, but you from Flatbush, you from the hood, you from Brooklyn, you from my hood. You how you gonna let this dude do you like that? You about to go to jail for him? Right, right. You know, because they even said in a paper that I seen that um, you know, even him and his sons are doing drive bys, and I'm like, oh, this nigga like, he's on a different level. That's a different world, the Joker. You know that we're not privy to. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, even down to like a Meek Mill. Um, I mean, hmm. Meek Mill always got he got a zesty vibe to me anyway. Hmm. Like he just he moved like right. a female to me kind of. He do. Uh, but you know. Inevitably, it's it's gonna be a lot to come out. Um, and you know we're start we're 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 only in February. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, you know when we do the lecture on the 22nd, we're gonna run the synonymous with a a cosmic narrative because you know as we continue to see the activity of the sun step up, you know we're we're also gonna see 
uh, the revealing of, you know, a lot of secrets come to the forefront. Um, and like I had made a post maybe about a month ago saying that Kanye West is going to serve as a motif that plays out, um, the, uh, you know, the Hopi prophecy in reference to the Red Kachina, you yes. know, a level of purification that takes place, you know, niggas are being cooked, uh, on a whole nother level now. Like we've never seen an artist or a celebrity this big be exposed at this level. That says a lot. You know, and these people aren't these people aren't called stars for no reason. Uh, you know, so so yeah. Please mute your phone, Raymond. Thank you, brother. So let's take this trip, y'all, down the uh the Rothschilds, quote unquote. You know, um, let's go and take a trip to the Rothschild estate and break down who these people are. Because we hear the name, so many people hear the name, but they have no, I don't think they understand the lengths in which these this family goes in the affairs of not just America, but global affairs. And why is, is it real is what it is, why they get the funding, why they get the payment, why they are quote unquote diabolical or not only their neighbors, but everywhere that they go. Backroom deals, betrayal, and a war that's lasted almost a hundred years. This is what happened when the richest family in the world decided to create their own country. In 1917, the Rothschilds, the trillion dollar family that invented modern day banking, used their money, power, and influence to strike a secret deal with the British government. That deal eventually led to the creation of the country of Israel. But what makes this story more bizarre is the crazy personality of the man who orchestrated this deal, Lord Walter Rothschild. Walter Rothschild was an enigmatic mega-billionaire with so much money that instead of using horses to pull his carriage, he imported zebras from Africa just to show off. This same billionaire also had a super weird hobby of gathering insects and bugs, eventually amassing over a million butterflies, moths, and other insects. The Jews are some of the most intelligent, industrious people in the world. However, for years, the millions of Jews scattered around Europe had been trying to secure a large piece of land to start the country of Israel. But no matter how hard they tried, they got nothing. That was until they linked up with the super rich Walter Rothschild, a man who could change the world with the snap of his finger. Wait for it. By the early 1900s, the Rothschilds were already the most powerful family in Europe. They were so wealthy that they had even given loans to the entire country of France to stabilize the economy. However, aside from their power, the Rothschilds also had a reputation for being extremely ruthless. They wouldn't hesitate to wield their power as a weapon, to bulldoze through their enemies and crush anyone who opposed them. If the Rothschilds wanted something, they better get it, or there'd be hell to pay. Walter Rothschild made the calls he needed to make, pulled the strings he needed to pull, and in 1917, the British government sent Walter an official letter, promising to do everything within their power to provide land for the creation of Israel. That letter redesigned the map of the world, and if you need proof, we have a copy of that letter. November the 2nd, 1917. Dear Lord Rothschild, I have much pleasure in conveying to you, on behalf of His Majesty's Government, the following declaration of sympathy with Jewish Zionist aspirations, which has been submitted to and approved by the Cabinet. So it's possibly the most famous letter in modern Jewish history. And it begins with three words, Dear Lord Rothschild. That letter, nicknamed the Balfour Declaration, is proof that it was the Rothschild family that created Israel. 
but there's even more evidence. In this interview, the head of the Rothschild family proudly explains how his ancestors created Israel. The interviewer begins by asking the question that was on everyone's mind. Why was it that this letter was sent by the Foreign Secretary to your great uncle Walter? The reason is obvious, because it was the Rothschild's money, power and influence that made the British government fall in line. Years later, Britain kept their promise to the Rothschilds and provided a large piece of land to start Israel. And in May 1948, the State of Israel was officially created. Although this was good news, the Rothschilds were just getting started. What the Rothschilds did next was even more impressive. They invested millions of dollars into Israel, building schools, roads, and everything needed to turn that piece of land into a beautiful country. James Rothschild single-handedly paid for Israel's Congress building, while Dorothy D. Rothschild paid for Israel's Supreme Court building. However, the more money the Rothschilds spent, the more problems they created. Why? Because the land the British gave to Israel actually belonged to another group of people called the Palestinians. And that land dispute sparked the series of conflicts between Israelis and Palestinians that's gone on for decades. But we're not here to talk about the war. We're talking about power. Specifically, the power of the Rothschild dynasty. Whatever you've heard about how powerful the Rothschilds are is nothing compared to the true scale of their influence. YouTube has dozens of videos about the Rothschilds, but this one is different. Because instead of merely talking about the Rothschilds, we'll sift through centuries of history to reveal five times the Rothschild family used money, violence, and power to reshape reality and mold the world in their own image. Starting with the time when the Rothschilds invented the banking industry that we have today. And the way they did it is more brutal than you can imagine. The Rothschilds didn't get into banking because they wanted to make the world a better place. They did it because they wanted power. And this thirst for power started in 1744 with Mayor Amschel Rothschild. From a young age, Mayer lived by the code that money is power. But even though he needed money to get power, Mayer was born to a middle-income family living in the ghettos of Frankfurt. However, Mayer had a plan to go from rags to riches. As a young man, he began a money-lending business. He started with a small amount and gradually grew his capital. Though this sounds pretty straightforward, the big problem with money lending is that people sometimes don't pay back what they borrow. But Mayer was a hard man, and he did whatever was necessary to get his loans paid with interest. Even from a young age, he developed a reputation as someone you shouldn't mess with. Mayer also maneuvered himself to become the personal banker of members of the German royal family. Over time, Mayer's small money lending and exchange business ballooned into a successful financial institution. But despite all his success, Mayer knew that there was one enemy that could destroy everything he had built. And that enemy was time. As Mayer grew old, he taught his financial skills to his five sons. More importantly, he also taught them that success isn't only based on their ability to manage money, but also to manipulate people and situations to their advantage. The game of money is deadly, and Mayer taught his sons to be more brutal than anyone they faced. After teaching them everything he knew, Mayer sent his five sons, Amschel, Solomon, Nathan, Karl, and Jacob, to different parts of Europe to dominate the banking sector. 
He figured if a Rothschild controlled the flow of money in the different parts of Europe, then the Rothschilds would be the most powerful family in Europe. Because money is power, and the one who controls the money has all the power. The Rothschild brothers spread their banking business to different cities like London, Paris, Vienna, and Naples. They applied the shrewd tactics their father taught them, and it worked. Very soon, the Rothschilds had created the world's first international bank. This Rothschild strategy created the blueprint for how banks open international branches today. International banks exist because the Rothschilds did it first. But they had more banking moves in store. The Rothschilds also invented the concept of using government bonds to raise money for the government. As they controlled more and more money, the Rothschilds became more and more powerful than entire governments. Years later, when countries wanted to set up central banks, guess who they called? The Rothschilds. The Rothschilds helped create central banks in many countries, like the Bank of England and the Banque de France. The next time you walk into a bank, say thank you to the Rothschilds. Although, for every good thing the Rothschilds did, they also did equally brutal things, like making money off the death and slaughter of millions of people. This brings us to the second time the Rothschilds changed reality when they decided the fate of the free world. In the 1800s, Napoleon Bonaparte was on a mission to take over the world. Napoleon was the greatest military strategist on earth. He could outthink, outwit, and outsmart anyone on the battlefield. The problem with Napoleon was that he wasn't satisfied with merely being a rich soldier in the French army. He wanted to rule the world, and so he launched a campaign to fight and conquer every country in the world till he was ruler of the universe. How crazy is that? At first, people thought Napoleon was overrated. But they started taking him seriously when he kept defeating his enemies on the battlefield. At a certain point, it seemed like Napoleon was going to become the most powerful man in the world, even though at the time, the Rothschilds were the most powerful people in Europe. And so, in an attempt to maintain their power, the Rothschilds did something so evil that it could make the devil cry. While the world was fighting against Napoleon, the Rothschilds decided to play both sides. War is expensive. The British needed money to pay soldiers and buy weapons. Any delay in getting the necessary weapons could allow Napoleon's army to rush in and defeat the British. The Rothschilds took advantage of this situation to give quick loans to the British government. If lending to individuals was profitable, imagine how much more profitable lending to a government was. Even though the Rothschild loans came with heavy interest, it was what they did next that showed their diabolical genius. The Rothschilds went behind the backs of the British and offered loans to Napoleon too. By the year 1815, the Rothschilds were supplying Napoleon with gold and silver to buy weapons to attack the British, and at the same time were supplying the British with money for guns and bombs to attack Napoleon. They did this so no matter who won the war, the Rothschilds would be on the winning side. Whoever won would also owe the Rothschilds millions of pounds, meaning the Rothschilds would still be the most powerful banking family in Europe. But their strategy had a fatal flaw. By giving money to both sides, they were indirectly prolonging the war. Each day, hundreds of soldiers were slaughtered on the battlefields because the Rothschilds were funding the war. Eventually, the war ended when Napoleon was defeated at the Battle of Waterloo. The British coalition forces had won, and they owed the Rothschilds a lot of money. At the end of the war, 
the Rothschilds were even more powerful. Instead of celebrating, the Rothschilds had one more card they wanted to play, and by the time they played that card, their wealth would increase a hundredfold in just 24 hours. This is the third time the Rothschilds played the world. Remember when we said Napoleon was defeated at the Battle of Waterloo? While everyone saw it as a final battle for control of the world, the Rothschilds saw it as an opportunity to increase their wealth, and they did it in the most terrible way. To understand what they did, you need to understand how the stock exchange and bonds work, but we'll explain it as simple as possible. The Rothschilds knew that if Napoleon won the battle, everyone in Britain would be disappointed. And that disappointment would affect the price of the pound sterling on the stock exchange, because the pound sterling is the official currency of the British. On the other hand, if the British won, then the pound sterling would become more valuable and increase in price on the stock exchange. And so, Nathan Rothschild paid a spy to wait on the battlefield to see who won the battle. So the spy watched the battle from his hiding place and saw that Napoleon was defeated. What he did next was legendary. The spy sent a pigeon to Nathan, informing him that the British had won. This meant that the pound sterling was going to be more valuable on the stock market. But nobody else knew the British had won because the official British horse messenger hadn't arrived in London yet. Nathan knew something nobody else did, and he used this information in a way only a heartless man would. Instead of celebrating Britain's victory, Nathan ordered his agents to spread fake news that Napoleon had won. When people heard this fake news, it caused panic selling of the British bonds on the stock exchange. The panic selling caused the price of the pound sterling to drop. And then Nathan, the same man who spread the fake news, ordered his agents to buy up all the bonds people were selling at rock bottom prices. 24 hours later, when the official government messenger arrived with news that the British had won, it was already too late. The British victory made the pound sterling shoot up in value, and because the Rothschilds had bought so much on the stock market, it made the Rothschilds incredibly wealthy overnight. According to reports, the Rothschilds made the equivalent of $6 billion due to that single move. And this set the stage for the next time Rothschilds changed the world by controlling how people think. Here's how they did it. The Rothschilds had amassed more money than they could spend in their lifetime, and the five sons taught their children the same lessons their father had taught them. Very soon, the next generation had the opportunity to put those lessons into practice. As the years went by and technology advanced, devices like the radio and television were invented. Information was no longer spread using horseback riders. All you had to do was switch on the radio or TV and you could see and hear news from all over the world. This was a new era, and the Rothschilds saw it as a threat. They had lived their lives by the principle that money is power, but this new generation of Rothschilds realized that information is a new form of power. If you can control the information people hear, you can control what they do. According to sources, the Rothschilds secretly invested in media companies, television networks, Hollywood production studios, and newspapers. The data on exactly how many media companies the Rothschilds own is difficult to find. However, with an abundance of money, they could pay whatever price to gain control of the world's media. The Rothschilds controlled the flow of money for decades and then captured the flow of information as well. They were now in a position of power that no one in the world had ever seen before. The Rothschilds' fifth chess move 
is right out of their playbook. Apart from media, the Rothschilds made investments in other industries. They formed the Rothschild Group and threw money at the most important companies in the world, from the USA to Japan to Switzerland. Their stakes in these companies gave them more power to steer the world's affairs. If they wanted to, they could influence the price of items and control the demand and supply of products and services. No one exactly knows how much the Rothschilds actually have because they've become extremely private. Although estimates say the Rothschilds own assets worth one trillion dollars or more. Whatever the exact amount, the Rothschilds are definitely sitting on the largest pile of wealth in history. The Rothschilds are the ultimate rags to riches story. They are living proof that money is power and that with enough power, you can rule the world. So when we talk about the Rothschilds, we have to also talk about the fact that these people have a vested interest in maintaining a facade by any means necessary right they are maintaining a, fa a facade and they're maintaining a quote-unquote lie right the creation of that zionist country relies on the fact that people have to believe that these people over there who are zionists are really the jews or what they call the chosen one so everything that they're doing and everything that they're carrying out and their whole purpose and right to exist and right to defend is predicated based off of the fact that they are the chosen ones. So it's been known throughout history that the Rothschilds and other families have conspired against the lost tribes, you know, against the messianic ones. And they've always been trying to sabotage, either sabotage, murder, you know, or silence or censor these days, the messianic ones. So the search for the 10 lost tribes, what happened to the 10 tribes and where are they today? Biblical archaeology has come a long way over the past century and a half. Discoveries in modern time have unearthed ancient cities, houses, temples, stone tablets, burial caves, coin, jewelry, clothing, weapons, and more all testifying to what life really was during the biblical period. There are some explorers who are searching for the 10 lost tribes of Israel, the majority of the Jewish nation who were conquered, forcibly displaced, presumably assimilated into other nations, and lost control with the rest of the world Jewry over the centuries. In recent years, there has been a renewed enthusiasm in this search among certain native peoples of Asia, Africa, and beyond who retain traditions, customs, and historical memories connected to the Jewish people. But first, some historical context. Now, when I read this, I want everybody to keep in mind, um, pay attention to the people who came into America as what they call migrants, right? Just pay attention to the countries that you heard of, right? Uh, that these people belong to. While I read this thing about these 12 tribes, okay? All right. <clears throat> the founding father of the Jewish nation was Abraham. The family legacy of monotheism, later to be known as Judaism, was passed on to his son Isaac, who passed it on to his son Jacob, who was given an alternative name, Israel. Israel had 12 sons, Reuben, Simon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, God, Gad, Asher, Isaacshire, Zebulun, Joseph, and Benjamin. And I know I chopped them names up, but pardon me. During a global famine, the family migrated
They migrated to Egypt where they significantly multiplied. The 12 sons of Israel developed into the 12 tribes of Israel, otherwise known as the children of Israel, which is how the Bible most often refers to the Jewish people. The tribe of Joseph actually became two tribes, descendants of his two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. The 12 tribes eventually inherited 12 portions of territory within the land of Israel, and this remained so for centuries. About 3,000 years ago, the 12 tribes were united into a unified political entity led by King David and was inherited by his son, King Solomon. This unified Jewish monarchy lasted about 73 years and was called the Kingdom of Israel. Y'all following me? All right. With the secession of Solomon's son, Rehoboam, only two of the tribes, Judah and Benjamin, located in the south of the country, remained loyal to the Davidic system, the Davidic dynasty, while the other 10 tribes came under the leadership of a tax collector from the tribe of Ephraim, known as Jeroboam. The realm of Jeroboam retained the namesake, the kingdom of Israel, since it included most of the Israelite tribes. In the realm of Reho... How, how do you pronounce that, y'all? I know I got some Israelites in the building that's mad at me right now. Rehoboth? Is it Rehoboth or Rehobim? Okay. The realm of Yahobim retained the namesake, the kingdom of Israel, since it included the Israelite tribes, and the realm of Rehobim was known as the kingdom of Judah, since the tribe of Judah was much larger than Benjamin. The two, the two Jewish kingdoms, Judah and Israel, sometimes went to war with each other and other times cooperated with each other both for trade purposes and to combat mutual external threats. In the year 722 BCE, the Assyrian Empire defeated the kingdom of Israel and forcibly deported most of its population. The question that has piqued the interest of scholars for generations is, what happened to the 10 tribes? Where did they end up? And where did they go? Okay. And where are they today? They want to know where they are today. So there's a search, and I, I'm, it's, it's to my knowledge that AI is going to help advance said search, right? It's, 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 that day is closing in. And there's a group of people that are not excited about that. They don't look forward to that day because it's almost like the search for Cinderella and whatnot. Once you find out who that slipper fits, then everything else is, you know, it's basura, the Bible does give some clues as to the destination points of their deportations from ancient Israel. In the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and exiled the Israelites to Assyria, and he repatriated them in Hala and in Habor on the Gozan River and the cities of Medea or Media. And that's in Kings the second. So, uh, Corinthians. Clearly, the general area we're talking about here refers to the Assyrian homeland and what is today northern Syria, northern Iraq, and northwestern Iran. In other words, modern day Kurdistan. Although the biblical place names are contested, the reference to the cities of media are commonly. Understood to be in the region of Hamadan, Iran. Or there, although there are no traces of the lost tribes in that area, it can it could have been a starting point for the Middle East. Afghanistan and Pakistan. 
the Pashtun tribes of Afghanistan and Pakistan who migrated to the area in ancient times from northwestern Iran have long intrigued seekers of the Ten Lost Tribes. On the surface, this is a group of 25 million people practicing a stringent form of Sunni Islam, right? So we got we got Afghanistan and Pakistan. America, they sent their people over there to wipe them out, right? They disrupted them, okay? So these Pashtun clans who are, have modern-day names, They'll go to war with their modern day tribes and be like, but they won't invoke their ancient names so you don't tie them into biblical because many members of the Pashtun are actually associated with the Taliban, right? So it's not exactly the first place you would expect to find lost Jewish tribes, but there's more to it. So America goes to war with all of these different places where the lost tribes are said to be and they ethnically cleanse them, and they wipe them out, right? But they go over there, and they create these narratives through Hollywood, through the CIA, through propaganda, and through all of these other things, where they be like, yeah, we had beef with them. We had to wipe them out. We had to take them out. Yeah, they was a threat. Oh, man, they were messing things up. They didn't let women vote, and they didn't let them drive cars. So we had to send the whole armed force over there and straighten that out. You, you know, guys, the good old American way, stupid shit like that. And, and our people fell for dumb shit like that and jumped in the whip with them. Like Trey jumped in the whip to Diddy's house. Within India, right? So in India, India, India. Within India, there are several groups who claim descent from the 10 tribes, including the Bean, the Bene Israel, the Bene Ephraim, and the Bene Manashach. The book of Esther seems to indicate that there were Jewish populations in all of the provinces of King Asorius. It was written according to the Mordecai commanded to the Jews and to the satraps and to the governors and to the principals and princes of the provinces from India to Ethiopia. All of these groups practice the most basic levels of Judaism. Ethiopia. The better Israel tribes of Ethiopia have long been theorized to be members of the Ten Lost Tribes. According to one local tradition, they are descendants from the tribe of Dan, who left ancient Israel prior to the exile. Another tradition places their origins in a union between King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, whose visit to Jerusalem was recorded in the Book of Kings. Interestingly enough, the Judaism practiced by the Ethiopian Jews distorted certain Jewish customs like family purity. Ethiopian Jews also were not familiar with the common Jewish custom of Tefillin, which is practiced by men. This points to a Judaism that could have been taught by a Jewish woman following her conversion, someone like the Queen of Sheba. Reference to Jewish communities in Northeast Africa Hold on. It's even recorded by the prophet Isaiah. And it shall come to pass that on that day, the Lord shall continue to apply his hand a second time to acquire the rest of his people that will remain from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Sumeria and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. That's in Isaiah 11.11. 11. Pathros is understood to be southern Egypt, and Cush is interpreted either as Sudan or Ethiopia. Conclusion. There are, in fact, dozens of ethnic groups around the world who claim to... So you see that they have ethnic cleansing in Ethiopia, right? They have that civil war going on, right? So just pay attention to that. And in the Sudan as well. And in the Sudan and in the Congo. There are, in fact, dozens of ethnic groups around the world who claim Israelites' origins, some with stronger cases and others with less evidence. Highlighted above are just some of the most common cases. It's interesting to note that today's Jewish population of some 15 million is not much more than it was 3,000 years ago. As we uncover more and more ethnic groups with ties to ancient Israel, 
we are perhaps seeing a Jewish family reunion on a massive scale, the likes of which were spoken by the prophets. So says the Lord God, behold, I would take the stick of Joseph, which is the Hannah. So these groups of people who are pretending, these groups of people who are appearing as, these groups of people who are cosplaying, these groups of people who have taken the identity, the identity theft, these identity thefts who have taken on the persona of and the customs of people who are not them. They are going to make it now a crime to talk about the truth of who they are. And they're also still to this day being handed over Holocaust, Holocaust money and all kind of stuff, right? So people hear Ukraine this, Ukraine that, but they don't know about the Ukraine historically. What the hell the UK, what the hell, why the Ukraine is so significant, right? A lot of people don't know this because of this dumbed down media or media, right? To this day, they're not teaching our people the right way, right? We learn through media most often through like Netflix and documentaries and shit like that, but they're not just giving up. They're not giving it up on the news. So we're going to go through some history of the Ukraine so we become more familiar, right? And we're able to tie in um, history and the mystery, right? By learning more about these people. Key moments of Jewish history have occurred in Ukraine, right? With the huge buildup in Russian troops along the borders, da, da, da. Jews lived in Ukraine since ancient times. Jews have been living in present-day Ukraine since ancient times. The ancient Greek city of Chersonosis, the present-day Sevastopol, they got some crazy names too, was formerly part of Ukraine and was annexed by Russia in 2014. And I was once home to Jews, Professor Andrew Overman of Malakalaster College directed the Black Sea Project in the 1990s, and he described some of his team's many Jewish finds. The team has focused on uncovering evidence of a Jewish presence in Chersonosis during the Roman period. The menorahs, the oil lamps with a Torah shrine depicted on the face and graffiti in Hebrew and Greek have all been found. One Hebrew fragment even mentions Jerusalem, the only known instance of this outside of ancient Israel. Additionally, one of the menorahs appeared to date from the Hellenistic period, making it one of the earliest known to scholars. Number two, the kingdom of Khazars converted to Judaism. The kingdom of who? The Khazars converted to Judaism in the Ukraine. Eastern Ukraine was home to the Khazar Empire, a kingdom of Turkic people that arose in southeastern Russia in the 6th century and extended as far west as Cave. Um, modern day Ukraine in the 8th century the Khazar king converted to Judaism and ordered that his followers do so as well many Khazars became Jewish embracing Jewish holidays and Shabbat and keeping kosher people may hear that today and be like man that's crazy how he did that well there's influencers on Instagram who converted their kingdom to follow ancient um Kemet, right? Dr. York, he converted a whole group of people to follow whatever direction he wanted to go in. So that happens to this day. Uh, it, it is happening at a higher pace with social media. So yes, this is the beginning of the present day Kazarian Mafia. That's the mafia that I was speaking of earlier that is in more power than the Jewish, than the Italian Mafia. They use them as the front runners or the face and whatnot, they are all powerful. They're way more vicious, way more powerful, 
and way more entrenched in the upper echelons of government. That's the Khazarians, and they come from the Ukraine. The Khazars at the time were ruled by a semi-divine king called Kagan and local chieftains called Begs. Legend said that the Khazar king ordered representatives from the three monotheistic faiths to his palace and listened to each of them discuss their religion. He was struck with Judaism's beauty and lucidity. In the Middle Ages, the great Spanish Jewish sage Judah Halevi wrote the Khazari, a beautiful philosophical book that imagined the discussion between the king of the Khazars and the visiting rabbi. The Khuzari is a robust defense of Judaism against critics from other religions and from indifference. Number three, Ukraine was also a refuge to Jews in the Middle Ages. The Middle Ages were a tumultuous time in Ukraine. Accounts describe the city of Kiev as being home to the substantial Jewish community in the 11th and 12th centuries. There were two heavily Jewish suburbs of the city and one entryway into Kiev city. Walls was also known as the Jewish gate. There are also references to a Jewish scholar at the time known as Moshe ben Yaakov of Kiev. In the early Middle Ages, the largely Jewish kingdom of the Khazars was buffeted by invading Russian forces, which ransacked its capital city in the year of 965 CE. The end of the Khazar kingdom came in the 1200s when Mongol tribes invaded much of present-day Ukraine and Poland causing huge devastation and loss of life. In order to build back its power and wealth, Poland invited new residents to move into its territories from the West, primarily from Germanic lands, right? See how they have influxes of people to fill their ranks. And over time, those people procreate and create more wards of the state, more bodies to tax, more soldiers, more workers, more cannon fodder, right? More insurance. Poland's invitation for immigrants to come attracted. Poland's immigrants, Poland's invitations for immigrants to come attracted Jews who were fleeing massacres in Central Europe in the wake of the Crusades and the Black Death. Jews settled throughout Poland, including in territories that form present-day Ukraine, most notably the region of Volhynia, which lies in the intersection of Poland, Belazarus, Bala um, and Ukraine. By the 1400s, up to 30,000 Jews were thought to be living in 60 different communities across Ukraine including in the present-day capital city, Kiev. Number four, the Ukrainians blame Jews for their landlord's greed. Jewish life in present-day Ukraine became even more entrenched after 1569 when much of present-day Ukraine came under a new political alliance, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Ukraine was an uneasy mix of many different ethnic groups. Much of the farmland in the country in Ukraine was the property of Polish nobles who were Catholic. The peasants in Ukraine were a mix of Eastern Orthodox Ukrainians and groups known as Cossacks, Cossacks, who lived primarily in the southern part of Ukraine. In the far south, the Crimean peninsula was owned by the Ottoman Empire and populated largely by Tatar Muslims, Tartarian Muslims, who engaged in constant low-level warfare with Cossacks along their border. Both groups would stage skirmishes into each other's territories, seizing property and slaves. Okay. So you had some series of massacres that took place, right? I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that, but it was some massacres. 
A series of Cossack raids began in 1648, aimed at freeing. Hold on. The leader of these attacks was Bodan, who agitated for an independent Ukrainian country, reflected Cos reflecting Cossack culture. He blamed the Jews for his countrymen's problems and encouraged his followers to massacre the Jews. Between 1648 and 1651, Chimelnecki's followers killed about 20,000 Jews with unimaginable barbarity. Approximately half of all Jews living in Ukraine fled. So great was the Cossacks' depravity that some terrified Jews even fled into Crimea, where they forced slave where they faced slaveries in the hands of Muslim Tatars. The official records of the Jewish community in Kiev recorded the beginning of the massacres. Immediately after the death of the pious king, um, Waladislaw, tens of thousands of villains, amongst them Cossacks, went forth and committed minu murders in the holy communities of Niemiro, Niemiro, Tulskin, and Maknoka. I'm, I'm, I know I'm, ha I'm hacking all this shit, but. We get in there. AI is going to be pronouncing everything one day. And other whole communities who congregated in order to save their lives from the sword since the destruction of the temple, no other cruel murder like this one was committed for the sanctification of the name of God. Okay. Another eyewitness account described they massacred about 6,000 souls in the town and they drowned several hundreds in the water and by all kinds of cruel torments. In the synagogue before the Holy Ark, they slaughtered with butcher's knives, after which they destroyed the synagogue and took out all of the Torah books. They tore them up and they laid them out for men and animals to trample on. They also made sandals of them and several other garments. The Cossacks knew no bounds in their sadism and cruelty and attacked and killed Jews as well as some Polish nobles with horrific barbarity. All right. Number six, Ukraine was a major center in the Pale of Settlement. So these situations that have taken place in these Eastern European countries all the way back in the 14 and the 15 and the 1600s it still is in the DNA of these people, of their offspring today, right? That epigenetics still lives within their DNA. So these are the people who still live with the memories of the quote-unquote lynchings and the pogroms and being, you know, um, held accountable for the shit that they were doing. They're getting ran out of a lot of countries. So when you hear Elon Musk talking about going to Mars and when you find out that, Zuckerberg and all of them are building underground bunkers it begins to make sense because they are basically going underground they have a fear they have an inherent fear they have an inferiority complex but they have an inherent fear that even when they go to sleep every night they don't know what what day they're going to wake up and they'll be in a reality where their um, dominance is being challenged or their authority is being challenged or what they would say their peace so they're building these out of the way bunkers. Let's check it out. As the world hurdles towards an uncertain future, the ultra wealthy are carving out a unique niche for themselves. One that involves luxurious bunkers and military grade security. Let's explore what they have planned in case of a worldwide collapse and uncover the secretive world of luxurious bunkers. Watch to unveil the secretive world of billionaire bunkers, where tech moguls and hedge fund tycoons are plotting their escape. Europa One, Vivos, Germany. At the forefront of this billionaire escape movement is Europa One, located in Germany. 
Developed by Vivos, this colossal underground sanctuary offers over 2,500 square feet of lavish living space to individual families. Beyond the basics, Europa One resembles a self-contained village with amenities such as a bar, chapel, pools, a movie theater, gardens, and even a wine vault. Available by invitation only, future residents can get to enjoy private luxury accommodations at a cost of $5 million per person. Rising S Company Shelters Rising S Company takes a unique approach, customizing individual to shelters shit. to the specific desires of their wealthy clientele. From operating rooms to horse stables, shooting ranges, basketball courts, and even crypto mining rooms, these bunkers are bespoke creations. Prices for Rising S shelters vary, with basic options starting at 40 grand and the luxury series ranging from 3.78 mil to a staggering 14 million dollars. Vivos Europa One, South Dakota site. For those seeking more modest accommodations, Vivos offers an alternative in South Dakota, USA. While details are not as lavish as Europa One, these shelters are designed to allow residents to operate independently for a minimum of one year, without having to return to the outside world. A 99-year lease on a private bunker costs $1,090 a year, plus a $55,000 deposit paid up front. Security Concerns and Doubts Despite the allure of these luxury bunkers, doubts persist about their ability to withstand a true apocalypse. Rushkoff raises critical questions about the viability of closed ecosystems within underground facilities, deeming them preposterously brittle in the face of unknown threats. Application Prices and Surge of Interest Vivos reported a surge in interest during significant global events, including the onset of the pandemic and Russia's attack on Ukraine. Online application prices for Vivos start at 35 grand per person, with substantial discounts for individuals possessing key survival skills. Rising S, on the other hand, offers shelters starting at 40 grand, with their luxury series commanding multi-million dollar price tags. Trend Analysis Douglas Rushkop sees the billionaire bunker trend as part of a more extensive pattern among the ultra-wealthy. He draws parallels to Elon Musk's ambition to colonize Mars, suggesting that these powerful figures are seeking escape hatches for consequences they may have contributed to, an endeavor akin to building a car fast enough to outrun its exhaust. The Unanswered Questions The overarching theme remains a question mark. Are these escape measures genuine solutions for, to the potential fallout of societal and environmental collapse, or are they elaborate fantasies of the ultra-wealthy? The juxtaposition of seeking refuge while contributing to a world rendered unlivable for others raises ethical quandaries about responsibility and accountability. The journey into the Oh, my bad. As the world hurdles part of a more are seeking escape hatches for consequences they may have contributed to, an endeavor akin to building a car fast enough to outrun its exhaust. The Unanswered Questions The overarching theme remains a question mark. Are these escape measures genuine solutions for, to the potential fallout of societal and environmental collapse, or are they elaborate fantasies of the ultra-wealthy? The juxtaposition of seeking refuge while contributing to a world rendered unlivable for others raises ethical quandaries about responsibility and accountability. The journey into the world of luxury bunkers reveals not only a desire for personal safety, but also a reflection of the broader impact of these tech titans' actions on the world. As these billionaires invest in securing their future, the world watches with a mix of fascination and skepticism. These are the implications of a society where the elite seek refuge from the consequences they helped shape. So, <clears throat> as you can see, also as things begin to shift, major banks, BlackRock, and everybody is moving towards Bitcoin, Ethereum.
right? Um, I just had a Zoom yesterday. I have this. If you're one of my Patreons, matter of fact, let's take a pause real quick. Let me get a one in the chat room. If y'all are enjoying everything that you're hearing tonight, if this is food for thought, if it's feeding you, you know what I mean? If you're getting full and whatnot, just give me some feedback. You feel me? Press a one in the chat. Or you can give me a fire emoji. I'll go with the fire emoji. Yeah, matter of fact, let's go with emojis. You know what I mean? Emojis are more, uh, they give more than one. You feel me? They give back more than one. So we could do that. If that's something that y'all feeling, let me know how this, how everything is going. Shout out to our Kibalon for pulling up and doing what he does. You know what I mean? You know what he does, you know. Um, I, I can't wait to see what he's about to cook up. And let me get a one if you already got your ticket and whatnot. Let me get a one if you already got a ticket. As a matter of fact, we even going to make it right for our first. Um, we're going to make it right for the first 10 people, right? I'm looking at my back office right now. For the first 10 people who get some tickets, I'm going to give you a bundle with three of the Alkibalon courses, the master classes that Alkibalon did with us. I will give you that bundle for free. That's going to be for the first 10 sales of the tickets to this event that we have. I'm going to drop the link in the chat real quick. Y'all take a water break. You know what I mean? Everybody take a water break, uh, a bathroom break, stretch and whatnot. You know, make yourself comfortable. Uh, we're going to be wrapping this up. We coming down, we winding it down. And, um, you know, yeah, I want to say thank y'all for pulling up. Uh, as you could tell, it, it's, 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 it's a lot going on in the culture, but not only is a lot going on, a lot is going on because a lot's supposed to be going on. Let's just keep that in mind. Nothing is happening haphazardly. Everything is taking place because it's supposed to be taking place. So let's keep that going. You feel me? And I promise you, like, <laughs> what we're going to do, to be honest with you, what, what we want to deliver, me and Akib Alon was talking about it, what we want to deliver to y'all is going to be something that y'all probably haven't seen before. And that's like a powerful visual for our, you know, not really a lecture, but like a like a like a documentary type of you know like a report, you know, similar to what we're watching in these um videos that we're seeing. What I would say is a video essay. That's the term that would signify what we want to do. Um, but when I go ahead and do a video essay, you know, I'm in Black Hollywood. I'm in Atlanta, so we're inside. Of, we're around movie studios. We got green screens. You know, we just went live yesterday inside of a creative space and we have many access to many others so go into those spaces you need a budget you feel me so i, I don't want to go in there and do nothing that look like it's struggling you want to go in there with a heavy budget and then the post-production will be a product that everybody will benefit from forever mm -hmm. forever let me share the link let me also go to the page. Boom, there goes the link. It just says vulture.eventbrite. We made it real easy, vulture, eventbrite. We right here, y'all. Come and check us out. We on eventbrite, vulture culture, our Kiba Lawn in Richfield. This is the early bird ticket at $77. You feel me? At $77. All right? And that's March the 22nd. March the 22nd from 8 p.m. until, okay? Descending to the shadowy world of occult, of the occult at our upcoming Vulture Culture Lecture featuring mysterious luminaries al Kibalon 44 and Rich Phil. This one-of-a-kind event will explore the taboo topics of macabre majesty surrounding dark arts, goth culture, and esoteric beliefs. Our knowledgeable speakers will guide you through spooky history and compelling present-day landscapes of these subcultures and belief systems. We'll examine famous occult figures from Alistair Crowley to Anton Levy 
and discuss modern mystical practices from witchcraft to Satan. Look, it's a <laughs> yeah. Uh, we go in there. <laughs> yeah, and sh shout out, to, shout out to you, Red. Um, like we said for the family, you know, Red just laid out a solid presentation and foundation with a historical context, you know, that a lot of people may have not been privy to, you know what I'm saying? So like we said, like, this is just, you know, the, the beginning stages, uh, leading up to 20, or uh, um, to, uh, um, the 22nd. Yeah, so, so, you know, with that being said, um, you know, the presentation, um, you know, that I'm gonna go into is relative to a visual aesthetic. You know, because a, a lot of times, you know, when I go into, you know, my lexicon and, you know, I start dibbling and dabbling certain um, wordplay and things of that nature uh, in reference to science and mathematics. Yes. You know, you got to You got to have videos. You got to have, you know, you got to have the images so that way we can internalize what's being said. Um, yes, yes. You know, we're going to run all this information together, you know, on the 22nd and really make it make sense because, as much as it has a historical context, you know, it also has a scientific context as well. And the Rothschilds play in both worlds, you know. So, again, the level of suppression of the technology and, and the science and the physics and all of that that the Rothschilds has played, you know, for, for centuries um, is all coming to the surface. But mind you, you know, all of that science that they suppress, you know, they, they receive from the ones who were the originators of it. So... You know, we're really going to, you know, parallel, you know, um, what's transpiring in the culture today um, all the way back to the 1800s to give you, you know, um, a stream of consciousness that 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 that, you know, um, puts everything in, in perspective and, and also lays out the foundation for the rest of the next what 10 to 15 to 20 years. So, yes. you know, we, we got a solid presentation on the way. Man, I can't wait. You know what I'm talking about? We will be building it up um, before the 322. You'll definitely hear from us uh, one more again, possibly, you know, and uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, at, at the rate that the news is going. By the time we see you on 322, which will seem like a few days, the way time is moving as fast. But it would be so much that has happened since then because we're definitely in the quantum quickening. Ashe, right? We waited for days like this. We should definitely be. I I, I practice gratitude. I practice gratefulness. I have to be very mindful of that because social media and you know just everyday life will have you questioning things and feeling ungrateful or unappreciated, right? When you have to be highly grateful and appreciative of every moment that you have, because if you're presently present right now, and you got the opportunity to do the things that are available right now. Now, I don't, um, don't want to jump all over the place, but on, what's today? Friday, right? I will be doing... An AI class. I'm starting my AI workshop, right? So this AI workshop is teaching people how to create what is known as a digital twin. Okay. So now you can have a digital twin. You can have an exact replica of yourself. You could write scripts for your digital twin. And your digital twin could basically have a YouTube channel where your digital twin is doing the news. Whatever the script is written for your twin to say, it looks just like you. So you, it's to the point where you can't even, if, if you don't say, yo, this is my digital twin, to the naked eye, it people wouldn't even know. Uh, you got Synthesia, people who are in the chat, and you work with Synthesia, and you could uh, add on to what's being said. Let the family know how precise that technology is in terms of the digital twin, right? Um, yeah, you know what I mean? So the possibilities to have a faceless channel, the possibilities to have a 
channel where your digital twin is, you know, running it and whatnot, and you're able to teach children and teach people and just do a lot of the work that maybe you physically don't have time to do at the moment, but you set something out and it's in the, it's in the matrix and it's working for you. Man, I'm here to let you know. I could go on for days because it's a lot of it's a lot of information. So on Friday, what which is tomorrow? No, so on Sunday, we are doing our first master class of March, right? And March is gonna be all about the AI and the VR. AI meets VR and whatnot. So AI, AI meets AR. AI meets AR and VR. So we're going to be doing how to make your digital twin, how to create your faceless channel and whatnot, and basically how to take advantage of this automation, AI and automation, which is changing the whole game. Okay. Whereas the 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 um the AI is automated, it's agents, it's doing things for you now. So now you have a whole workforce. This or this 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 digital, you know what I'm talking about? You know what I mean? And it's and it's really doing things, it's doing, it's working for you, sending out emails, it's checking emails, you know, um, it's designing things. Yeah, so yeah. And and two, uh, before we check out, um, if there's um Cause we could take about two. If there's anybody that wanna that wants to step up and uh, if they got any questions relative to what was even spoken about briefly, um, you know, you can step up and ask those questions if you may fit. So yeah, those who are interested, you can step up and turn on your mic and ask any question. But we're gonna limit it to to uh, two. Yeah. And like Greg said, again, take advantage because, you know, like we had did back in 2022, we laid out a solid foundation um, and uh, created three classic, four classic, as a matter of fact, um, four lectures three. that we did. So for those who buy the tickets, you know, you will be privy to that information and to those videos. Right. You, it's, I call them prophecy. And that's not to be arrogant or egotistical, but. I, we want you to be be the judge. You know what I mean? Like the, man, those were ahead of their time. Yep, yep, yep. So yeah, for again, again, for those in the, in the building, um, again, purchase your tickets. Um, you know, we will be jumping on 322. You know, there'll be a lot of visuals, a lot of aesthetics. Somebody mic on? No, we got it. Okay, sound like somebody wanted to pop in and ask a question, maybe. But, but yeah, family. Um, again, shout out to Red too. Again, uh, an amazing delivery on the historical aspect when it comes to the lecture and what we're presenting on three twenty two. Um, you know, again, for those who follow me, know what my angle is. You know, and I always tend to come from you know a scientific and mathematical perspective, but it all runs in concurrent to what not only Ray was speaking about, but what, you know, is happening in the world in general. So, yes. you know, it's just, it's again, it's going to be a visual demonstration, you know, it's going to be a, a lot of imagery, um, you know, and a lot of homework too, you know what I'm saying? So, yes. you know, with that, again, if the family doesn't have any questions, they don't want to pop in, um, you know, I'm going to land a plane there. Yo, yo, yeah. can I ask a question? Yes, indeed. Yo, my question right here, I'm very nervous because this is my first time speaking ever. But at oh, the same salute. time, Welcome. they're allowing us to, you know, my name is Jay. I'm from Houston or whatever. But they're allowing us to tap into this technology today of crypto, right? But still, we always say that they are 20, 30 years ahead of us in technology. So just because they are allowing us to see this technology how does it guarantee us to catch up to format us a new way to change this diversion of not having that education 
or access to actually change our own walk in this world. So that's like asking if if you were drowning, you would be like, yo, why would you pull me halfway out the boat when, you know, like that you you got to take one step before you take 10 steps, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, so first of all, think about it. Nobody's allowing anybody to do anything. What's taking place with technology, remember technology is in ancient chemics called HECA. Uh, it's mental science. It's men, you know what I mean? It's, it's man's mind creating things. The technology that we're interfacing with these days was technology that many of us grew up watching in movies and on TV shows, some of our favorite TV shows. And, you know, in some of the comics that we read, you know what I mean? Like, nobody is doing any, nobody is giving us anything. The majority of the stuff that you're interfacing with has an origin on a continent as it as it stands anyway. The algorithm was created by more, you know? There's so many things that we un- misunderstand when we're looking at technology, yet and mm-hmm. still we claim ownership to people who were, you know, um, opening up portals and whatnot and, and and doing all type of sacred, you know what I mean? As if they did not have higher forms of technology. What is a what is an unidentified flying object, but a higher form of technology? So, yes, we may be dealing with what we have our hands on now, but that's 10 times more than what we had last month. And as we move up this ladder, we'll get into contact with more advanced technology. But until we could prove that we could take this technology and shake the pillars of this matrix with it, why are we looking for the flying saucers and whatnot and the sw- and you know and the lightsabers? But we don't even know how to tweak mid journey and stable diffusion to tell our story and to keep the. It took Google to put a picture of 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 a black George Washington or a black president out, and it shook up the whole goddamn world, right? You saw that you saw it when that happened? Facts. Yeah, did you you do you wonder why they were shaking up? It's exactly why we said for many months when we were doing the workshops and we were making these courses and we were teaching all around the world about AI and how to use it to your benefit. Um, because now what you have is a situation where the world has been um, democratized in a sense where everyone is on an equal playing field, okay? It's never been a time like this before. You exist in a time where you cannot claim any type of why. You can't claim, you can't play, you can't ask why. There's no why. It's when. When are you going to work towards what you want to bring to a reality when you gonna when are you gonna reverse the curse when are you gonna make your movie pop off and make that shit be the movie that everybody's watching we took them out that's all you gotta be worried the, the paying attention you giving the wrong energy so you give the wrong energy and then you're not tapping into the right energy that's how people are robbing themselves Right. And also, too, you know, it's not always about catching up to what they got going on and feeling like we're in a rat race again. Like, you know, the technology is on the tip of your nose. This is why it's so important to understand, like, the body and how it works. This is what we're going to go into on 322, you know, because the highest form of technology, you can't see it. It's non-physical, you know, Um, the idea of, again, utilizing the the medium right to 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 bring something into fruition from the unseen to the seen world is relative to the highest form of technology. The word tech means to build. Ology comes from the Greek word logos, which means utterance or speak or speech. You know, so we can say hip hop is the highest form of technology because that came out of nothing. You know what I'm saying? And and generated, you know, a, a concept of break dancing. You know, uh, graffiti art. Uh, MCing knowledge, a self, you know what I'm saying? But is that Jordan Peterson video where he's he is that a Jordan Peterson video where he's speaking almost saying the same thing that you're saying? Is it a Jordan Peterson? No, I'm just saying, have you have you? I believe it's a Jordan Peterson video that I saw 
in the past. I think Blue posted it. And he's saying about the 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 scientific um theory behind hip hop. Why mm. why 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 um although it, it was dismissive and whatnot behind closed doors, you know, they marvel over what it is that we're able to do. Okay. Mm. Because it mm -hmm. incorporates so many factors and so many um, you know, just so many algorithms are, are moving at the same time. And you're like, damn, yo, this shit is magic. These people are right. weaving reality, bro. Weaving reality, right, shit right. And like the, again, technology again was in the Bronx when you seen trains going through the city with graffiti, with all type of colors and imagery. That's tech. That's a form of technology because that was a language that was being spoken directly to the body, to you know, and to 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 bring up. Um, again, to the conscious mind, something that's mm -hmm. laying dormant. That that's a form of geometry. You know what I'm saying? That is technology. Keep it you like know? that, right? So I'm 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 in a carriage, right? I'm watching Mickey Mouse cartoons, but they making fun of black people with bones in their nose on a black and white TV. But my mom takes me outside in a carriage, and then the train that passes above me on this over over towering um rail and whatnot. It got the it has cartoons in color, right? But these cartoons are is hip hop. They're different. They're not like Disney cartoons. These cartoons got swag. Mm. You know? And sir, the real technology, another form of technology was when they took those two turntables and turned them into a whole new they hacked the system and they turned it into a whole new technology. And that technology spawned um, a trillion dollar culture, which will be global um, DJing. Mm -hmm. That's something we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There, there's there's people in Africa right now on the continent. They're showing you what, how, 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 how we are originally tied in through DNA to engineers and to inventors you into math into supreme mathematics and whatnot because once you have uh, understanding and a mastering of that let alone imagination then you're supposed to be creating a plethora of things i think we collectively have fallen behind on creating and inventing and, and inventing things like we got we got caught in that lack uh um spell the lack spell mm -hmm. Where a nigga so think he could just be one job his whole life and then die. Star for law. When we were polygrots. And people don't even understand how we got to polygrots to this day. They like, damn, how could a nigga be a lawyer? He was also a doctor. And he was a poet. But he also fought three wars. And then he was a playboy. And a steam, a, 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 a whatchamacallit, a steamship salesman. Like those were stories of our people back in the days when we were mm -hmm. polygrots, when we were skilled, like the video where you saw the Moor or the African playing 12 people at chess in the same time. Yeah, that, that was, was crazy. That's, that's the Moor right there. But he exemplified who we were as polygrots all around the world. That was basic, bro. I'm dead ass. Like how people stand around and look at they watch and now they look at their phone. That was us. And like how I like homie and them be in the park and whatnot, like Riz and them be playing chess in the park. Like all of the wise, wise men. They be at the chess table. Yeah, that would that that's a knockoff of what the Moors were doing in their magnificent courts in Cordova, you know, in Al Andalus and Alhambra. You know, and things like that, right? Which again, chess is a form of technology because that comes, you know, directly from the I King or the I Ching. You know yes. what I'm saying? You got, you got, you got, you know, um, eight squares across the top and going down. You got eight. You got a total of sixty four. Um, yes. You know, boxes that are black and white, which deals with the yin and the yang. You know, um, so the I Ching again corresponds with the 64 variations of the codons, you know, um, 
that that are the genetic language to the DNA. So there you have it. Again, it always draws back to the original technology, which is the body itself, mm -hmm. you know, and everything outside of the body, you know, is an imitation of that. So, right. Wonderful. They got one more question for you hey, before we get I, out of here. Can I get asked this question for one second yes. before we get out yes, of here? Yes, Tyler. Yes, sir. Um, I want to make sure I place this right, but yeah, do you believe Tony? that if if we develop ourselves better within our own technology, which is the human body, the human mind, rather than how they're developing AI to compete with humans, if we develop ourselves better, we can interact with the AI within a way that's better to develop our communities, develop where we're trying to go 15, 20 years from now. Can I answer that quickly? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would, the way that we interact with AI depends on where we are in a healthy state of mind. The healthier right. the state of mind, then the more better than we'll be able to interact with the AI. Because keep in mind, what they showed you with the Google Gemini thing is the AI is going to give you what you program it with, right? So as melanated people, we suppose two things happen. Tyler Perry and the Google Gemini thing. So Tyler Perry showed the world his hand, right? He doesn't have a good PR agent because a good PR agent would have told him, you'd never tell the world that you are going to stop the construction of your studio because you found out about OpenAI Sora. You're supposed to play it like you a billionaire player and you already knew about that and you're building a $800 million studio for ai you don't have to say nothing else about you didn't know anything just put the p the press release out tyler perry's in atlanta building a 800 million dollar studio strictly for vr ar sr that would have shook the world up that would have got investors on deck that would have that would have exploded the economy in atlanta to be honest with you it's already exploding but that would have did a uh, that would have been a how, how you don't have a publicist to tell you, you don't got a rich fill in your corner to tell you something like that. And then he goes out and says, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm halting the production of my $800 million film studio. I was, he was, he's adding on to what he already has, which is $300 million worth. And he's saying, because I saw open AI drop that, Sora, where you could basically just prompt out a 3D environment. You you could create a world now. You could create a movie because it now can output more than one minute of, of footage. So it's over now. So all of the stories that people wanted to tell, y'all could tell. All of the stories that you ever wanted to tell, you could tell. It don't matter if you locked up doing life. It don't matter if you don't got no hands. It don't matter. And nothing matters. It don't matter if you know how to speak English. None of that matters. It don't matter if you're illiterate. It don't matter if you're on welfare. It don't matter if you're home. None of, the, none of those barriers, you can't use any of those excuses. And the more that you use them, it's almost like the broker you'll become. It's, it's some points to go away somewhere. But you have to look at the positives and you have to take advantage and it's how healthy you are because if you're not healthy you're not going to see the opportunity if you're not healthy you're not going you're going to hear the fear that they it's like dog whistles you'll feel you'll hear you'll feel the fear and you'll hear the fear and you'll never go towards what you supposed to you know how many years they put people in fear about bitcoin now look at it right and it was the same people there was acting like something was wrong with that thing. Like there was something illegal about that thing. Like there was something flawed about it. They the same people that's going to champion it next week. And you fell for the okie doke again and again and again. But who was on the front lines telling you, go and get the Bitcoin? Believe you me, 2013. The show is on the blockchain. The show is already 2013. We had... No. Bitcoin shows. If anybody was there, please say something in the um in the chat. For real though, I don't mean to cut your knowledge or whatever, but I work yeah. at J.P. Morgan Chase. 
So yeah. our CEO is already talking about don't buy Bitcoin, it's trash, we should shut it down and everything. But still in the background, they <laughs> buy it up. They test it right. out. <laughs> I'm watching what they do. I'm following the money versus listening to what they say. The biggest, the biggest, they they pulled off the biggest quote unquote bait and switch. You understand? They had the Tom Brady and them had to retire because they running better plays than them. The way that they had people running the other way, while they went and snapped, they did the same thing that Rob Child did when I was just, when you saw that video when they was like, "Yeah, he told them niggas that they lost, right?" So they dumped the bonds, they scooped them up on the pennies, and then voila, magic. That's the same thing that just happened with Bitcoin recently. When they pulled the plug on it, remember it dropped back to 16 to say, hey, you niggas, I'm giving you one more chance to jump on. You know what I mean? Because when I go up, I'm gone. Facts. Ethereum was at 900. It's at 3,500 right now. You remember that? It just, the bitty went down in the, what, what we in, in 2023, it was going, it was, it was happening like that. So, once again, timing is everything. Everybody talk about time this, time that. What about timing? What about timing? Because this is all about timing. Your life changes based off of your timing. Because if you was on perfect timing and you heard back in the days where we was like, yo, this is how you get the Bitcoin. This is what the Bitcoin is. We had the uh, we had the D Miller and all of them. They they was giving you all of the cloth back then, all the way up into this day. There's mad people with bitcoins around me. You know what I'm talking about? It's oh. Odin. That's it. I I'm gonna show you. Uh, let me see. Do Ooh. I have that? One bitcoin Ciao. purchased in no. A hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin purchased in two thousand and nine. One hundred dollars worth of it purchased in two thousand and nine is worth one billion dollars today. One billion dollars today is like one point two billion dollars or something. Just a hundred dollars worth. So there's a story about the pizza day where somebody bought one slice of pizza for ten thousand bitcoins. I just want that. To, I want to let that sink. I just want. I want that to just sit in your mind real quick. That there's one person who bought a pizza for ten thousand bitcoins. So there's nothing really crazy about that. The fact is, is if he was buying a pizza with ten thousand, imagine how much he had in the stash, and imagine how many other people around. Because it, it that, that's just you know what I'm saying. So yeah. Uh, yeah, no doubt. And shout out to my guy Tyler from D Moore. Uh we've had several uh several bills, young brother. Shout um, out to the God, Tyler. Shout out to the God, yeah. Um, but with that being said, family, again, we're gonna tap in 322. Make sure you get your tickets. Um, you'll be seeing us again. So, you know, we'll be tapping in on YouTube. Um, you know, IG um, as well, you know, to continue to give you these breadcrumbs leading up to the actual date. You know what I'm saying? So just make sure you come prepared. You know, of course, as I always say, bring a pen and a pad. You know, yes. I'm going to have my presentation, my demonstration. Yes. Um, you know, Red Pill's going to come through with his collegiate demonstration and yes. preparation. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the family tapping in and uh, being in class. Yeah, my, my, my shit gonna be super gothic. Yes. Super doth, super gothic. Yo, what's your cash app, brother? Because yes. we did this free demonstration. So we're gonna leave our cash apps so the family could show love as well. You know what I mean? And leave a tip at the table. What's your cash app out here? How many children you got? I got four. Yeah, I got three. So salute mm -hmm. to the little ones. Salute to the future. You know. For all of my fathers and my mothers out there, uh, I hope, I hope. I mean, if we don't have your email, please make sure we do. But everybody that registers, we should have your information. We'll be sending you out some emails about all of the programs that we have coming up 
in March, I have a program called Kid Journey. And Kid Journey is going to be an AI course where we're going to teach the children from three years old, they only need to be three up to 13 on how to basically make uh, a lot of money with AI and also how to make money with the quote unquote, um, what they call mid journey, Dolly three and all of the art generations or all of the video generators and whatnot. So we live in a day and age where now you could make video games. They just came out with something with um, Google where you could prompt video games. They have something where you can make comic books. They have an AI where you can make 3D uh, models and whatnot. And they have Sora. So Kid Journey is going to take your young one into a whole nother world. Tap in with your brother, Red Pill. We got you. We said that evolution will be digitized in 2015. And we knew what we were talking about because here we are. You know what I'm talking about? So look out for that commercial. We got we're gonna drop it um probably tomorrow on the first for the classes coming up on Sunday. That'll be all of my Patreons for the Supreme membership. Y'all good. If anybody want to take one class, that's forty four dollars. If you want to sign up for four classes, that's ninety nine dollars for the month for the AI class. We're gonna get we're gonna get you digital twins. We're gonna teach you how to make faceless channels. And we're going to help you build a digital empire. So you could take one class. We'll teach you the digital twin. Or you could take four classes. And we're going to teach you digital empire. Whatever you need. We got you. All right. So thank you, everybody, for your time. Thank you for your energy. Thank you for your questions. Um, thank you for your ears. I, we felt your energy. We felt your, your, you know, just your presence and whatnot. And I want to say we really, really, really want to say thank you. You know what I mean? Y'all presence mean everything to me and his brother. And it makes us feel appreciated. So salute to every single one of y'all. Stay dangerous. Travel lightly. Keep your head. Oh. Know that this shit is always working in our uh in our favor. Everything that we see taking place, the master teachers been told us was gonna happen. I promise you. I would shit you not. And we got too many witnesses and whatnot. If if, not, if anything that was going on was out of the realms of what the master teachers was teaching about back in the days, then you would know. But it's all in alignment. So like Bobby Hammond always says, we already won. Facts. <laughs> we just waiting for the red and blue Kachina to show up. We really already won. You know? So, you know, keep shining. And we want to see y'all on 322. Let's do a ritual. Let's do a collective ritual. Um, let's see how everything that we talked about tonight manifests in a 30-day span. Because we know that there's a power in the word and whatnot. So a lot was spoken of tonight. And the replay will be available only on Patreon. It is free to sign up. It costs you nothing, okay? It's just a place where we keep all of our too hot for YouTube content because you know how they treat us on ig and all of these media platforms so the replay will be available but i want y'all to make sure to listen to the information that our kibalon laid out listen to the information that i laid out and just see how it plays out in the next 30 days how that information will become part of the narrative and how that information will actually grow it will it will grow legs or it will duplicate itself and you'll see TikTok speaking of stuff like this that you heard tonight. You feel me? And then that way, you know, the great divine is speaking to you. So with that being said, I'm going to end it with some music, man. You know what I'm talking about? Because we a music, man. We could be able to go into um, album mode real quick that uh, we did an album listening for uh, that month, that 48 uh, Pillars of Power uh, and, that, and man, wait till you see the back, wait till you see the video on that. That's only on Patreon too. We're going to have that exclusively two hours of footage of a behind the scenes for the listening, which was fire. You know what I mean? Classic. So this is Breathless featuring Red Pill, Blue Pill, and Cambada and Brother Rich, Father Rich. We will be on March 9th at the Industry ATL in Atlanta. We're doing an album release. For the Holy Ghost 3 for everybody. March 9th. Pull up. 
to industry 400 Loyola Street, Loyola, L-O-Y-O-L-A, Loyola, 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 Street, um, Loyola, L-O-Y-O-L-A. I'm going to have the flyer on my page. Come and celebrate life with us, March 9th. Peace. Crushing the socials, rushing through Ukraine, touching the locals, quasi codal touching the coastals, Ethiopia touching the opals, and quasi nobles, kissing the ring, you niggas is Google, I'm chat GPT, mix with the bing, lift every voice without lifting a thing, the baby was born with the gift of sing. I'm the last Elon, straight out of Pilon, I'm victory lapping, watching history happen, mystery cracking, it's the elitists attacking the fetus, they packing the seats, I'm cracking like C for C, they say it won't happen again, like gay getting back with Adidas, he back with the heaters, back in the sweepers, so black like a pack of fajitas, used to get stacks for the features, now niggas, they pay us with straps with the back of their sneakers, just to come stack with the teachers, we made them a promise and made us some comments, they paid us some homage, we married the game and they gave us Madonna, no maiden, no honor, rebuking the priesthood like Shane Nate O'Connor, if I take the breath, God give you the breathe and remove the air from the wind and the breeze superman to turn to christopher reed i injured his knee if i train the blood you got in you that bleeds chop the tree of knowledge down and pick up the lead superman to turn to christopher reed i injured his knee as i mumble on pro tools spaceship i could hover and cloak too i abducted and probe you got the tongue of a toe too and the rumble with goku it wasn't even close i thought somebody told you i've been munching on gold shrooms till i grow huge like i jumped on a toadstool hera mera mera on the wall i'm hearing i'm the fairest of them all i clearly am a pharaoh in a god there is no comparing me to y'all peter mantra manifesting well so me and all my family have held destroy the world and build it back better my mind i'll build a planet by myself unbelievable i'm achieving the unachievable Hold on, hold on. Y'all can't go nowhere. I just realized we didn't do roll call. Nah, we gotta do roll call before we get up out of here. We I'm to see how time moving so fast. We forgot roll call. Please unmute your mic. We need to know where y'all from, man. Let's let's do the roll call. We can't do we can't do unmuted mics on YouTube, so let's take advantage of this. And let's Yo. see. Yeah, let's tap out mm-hmm. like that. Give power to where you from. Shake, shake the pillars of the grid. Where you from? Let's do that. All of them in the building. What happened? All of them. From Washington in the building. I right. best stop right Brooklyn. Up. Best stop Brooklyn. You already. BK, what it do? Delaware in the building. Delaware, never, never scared. That's what it. That's what it that's 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 We got West Michigan in the building. All right. All right. You, you said West Michigan. You said West Michigan. Yeah, I'm in Kalamazoo. Yeah, I'm in Kalamazoo. Indeed. Salute. L- North Las Vegas in the building. BKNY. We got the Lenape. Uh, California in the building. Cali in the Khalifa. All right. He's California. Cation. That's right. That's right. Portland. Tacoma, San Tacoma, Washington, Washington in the building. Washington in the building. Tacoma, Washington, Washington in the building. Peace, Tacoma. Orlando, Florida. Salute to Orlando, Florida. The land of the Gators. Cleveland. Cleveland in the building. Salute to the Cleveland. London. The land of the Giants. Orlando, Florida. Shout out to Orlando, Florida. Land of flowers. You know, you know that's all Moorish land over there. London, UK. I see you across the pond. It's very imperative if anybody is in America listening to this that you make a, a pilgrimage to the UK. It's important to cross over that water and go over there and just pay it a visit, you know? Pay it a visit. It helped it help open up my eyes to things that just living in America wouldn't have opened up my eyes to. Maybe we're gonna do a UK trip and bring the the uh the American family them as a as a yeah we could mind we could do something like that. But yeah, salute to everybody. I'm gonna end it with this music, just vibe out to it, you know. It's one of them things, it's a you know.
It's almost Friday and whatnot. Time to unwind. But peace to the fam, yo. Crushing the socials, rushing through Ukraine, touching the locals, quasi codal, touching the coastals, Ethiopia, touching the opals, and quasi nobles, kissing the ring. You niggas is Google, I'm chat GPT, mixed with the bing. Lift every voice without lifting a thing. The baby was born with the gift of Kassim. I'm the last Elon, straight out of Pilon. I'm victory lapping, watching history happen, mystery cracking. It's the elitists attacking the fetus, they packing the seats up, cracking like C for C. They say it won't happen again, like gay getting back with Adidas, he back with the heaters. Back in the sweepers, all black like a pack of fajitas. Used to get stacks for the features, now niggas, they pay us with straps with the back of their sneakers. Just to come stack with the teachers. We made them a promise and made us some comments, they paid us some homage. We married the game and they gave us Madonna, no maiden, no honor. Rebuking the priest like Shane O'Connor. If I take the breath, God give you the breathe. Remove the air from the wind and the breeze. Superman to turn to Christopher Reed. That engine is me. If I train the blood, you got in you that bleeds. Chop the tree of knowledge down and pick up the lead. Superman to turn to Christopher Reed. That engine is me. As I mumble on Pro Tools. I can hover and cloak too. I abduct and then probe you. Got the tongue of a toe too. On the rumble with Goku. It wasn't even close. I thought somebody told you. I'd be munching on gold shrew. Till I grow you. Like I jumped on a toadstool. Hera, Mera, Mera on the wall. I'm Hera and I'm the fairest of them all. I clearly am a pharaoh in a god. Go. There is no comparing me to y'all. Peter Mantra manifesting wealth. So me and all my family have held. Destroy the world and build it back better. My mind, I'll build a planet by myself. Unbelievable. I'm achieving the unachievable. I'm conceiving the unconceivable. All the demons I summon speak Hebrew. We play peekable. Unpredictable. Unexplainable. Unexplicable. Undefinable. Undescriptable. Underrated. Unequivocal. Unforgivable. Feeling like I've become invisible. My underground like the mud and mineral. Industry is so fucking pitiful. Only signing the thugs and criminal. Honestly, I would love to kill a few. Treat around like a blood and crip would do. Get in school, I would punch the principal. Treat the system like what would Hitler do. If I do? take the breath, God give you the breathe. And remove the air from the wind and the breeze. Superman to turn to Christopher Reed. That engine is me. If I train the blood, you got in you that bleeds. Chop the tree of knowledge down and pick up the lead. Superman to turn to Christopher Reed. That engine is me. Dodging the rainstorms, gotta be chained on, frozen like brain freeze. Golden like 18, swollen like 18. From the bone, where they take green. Shit, we throw in the mainstream. Uh-huh. Leave a nigga stiffin' in steak greens. Look, you're sweeter than pastries, cheapin' on lace weeds. Got a nigga face key. Say cheese, had to rub it in like rapeseed. Pillar bleed blue like Grape Street. Spitting over rape beats, slipping off our waist beats. I got the gas, baked beans. God is a nap that can make me. God in a nap, make cream. I got it in the bag, rape leaves. I did dirt since my late teens. Now it's a must that we stay clean. Established trust, stay cream. Added belt with no late fees. Mad as fuck when you waste cream. It's adding up through the late fees. Mars attack, that's a space beat. Mars attack like a hate speech. Mars intact like we make drinks, Mars is back like a lace string. Look, roll up some trees, we could pour up some tea. Flow like a CD, you know that it's me. Uh-huh. Pop them up here in a Holy Ghost 3. What? Throw us a beat, we gon' bone the appetite. Uh-huh. Home, I'm a beast on the road, I'm a freak. We don't fuck, we don't speak, that's the code of the street. If I take the breath, God give you the breathe. And remove the air from the wind and the breeze. Superman to turn to Christopher Reed. That engine is me. If I train the blood, you got in you that bleeds. Chop the tree of knowledge down and pick up the lead. Superman to turn to Christopher Reed. That engine is me. License any asset type in one simple plan. Try free for 30 days. Start creating with Adobe Stock. Consider that New Year's resolutions are not the answer for you this year. You need real solutions. And Crushing the socials, rushing through Ukraine, touching the locals, quasi codal, touching the coastals, Ethiopia, touching the opals, and quasi nobles. 
this in a ring. You niggas is Google, I'm chat GPT, miss with a bing. Lift every voice without lifting a thing. The baby was born with the gift of sing. I'm the last Elon, straight out of Pilon. I'm victory lapping, watching history happen, mystery cracking. It's the elitist attacking the fetus, they packing the seats, I'm cracking like seat for seat. They say it won't happen again, like yeah, getting back with the DDC, back with the heaters. Back in the sweepers, so black like a pack of fajitas. Used to get stacks for the features, now niggas, they pay us with straps with the back of their sneakers. Just to come stack with the teachers. We made them a promise and made us some comments, they paid us some homage. We married the game and they gave us Madonna, no maiden, no honor. Rebuking the priesthood like Shane O'Connor. If I take the breath, God gave you the breathe and remove the air from the wind and the breeze. Superman to turn to Christopher Reed. I injured his knee. My train of blood you got in you that bleed. Chop the tree of knowledge down and pick up the lead. Superman to turn to Christopher Reed. I injured his knee. I mumble on Pro Tools. Spaceship, I could hover and cloak too. I abducted and probe you. Got the tongue of a toe too. On the rumble with Goku. It wasn't even close. I thought somebody told you. I'd be munching on gold shrooms till I grow you. Like I jumped on a toadstool. Hera, mera, mera on the wall. I'm hearing I'm the fairest of them all. I clearly am a pharaoh and a god. There is no comparing me to y'all. Repeat a mantra manifesting well. So me and all my family have held. Destroy the world and build it back better. My mind, I'll build a planet by myself. Unbelievable. I'm achieving the unachievable. I'm conceiving the unconceivable. All the demons I summon speak Hebrew. We play peekable, unpredictable, unexplainable, unexplicable, undefinable, undescriptable, underrated, unequivocal, unforgivable, feeling like I become invisible, underground like the mud and mineral, industry is so fucking pitiful, only signing the thugs and criminals, honestly I would love to kill a few, treat a rat like a blood and crip would do, kid in school I would punch the principal, shake the system like what would Hitler do, if I take the breath God give you the breathe. Remove the air from the wind and the breeze. Superman to turn to Christopher Reed. I injured his knee. My train of blood, you got in you that bleeds. Chop the tree of knowledge down and pick up the lead. Superman to turn to Christopher Reed. I injured his knee. Dodge in the rainstorms, gotta be chained on, frozen like brain freeze. Go to like 18, swollen like 18. From the borough where they take green. We throw in the mainstreams, uh -huh. leave a nigga stiffin' in state greens. Look, yeah. got sweeter than pastries, cheapin' on lace squeeze. Got a nigga face ski, say cheese. Had to rub it in like rape seeds. Pillar yeah. bleed blue like Grape Street. Spittin' over rape beats, slippin' off her waist beats. I got the gas, baked beans. God is a nap that can make me. God in a nap, make cream. I got it in the bag, rake leaves. I did dirt since my late teens. Now it's a must that we stay clean. Established trust, stay cream. Added belt with no late fees. Mad as fuck when you waste cream. It's adding up through the late fees. Mars attack, that's a space beat. Mars attack like a hate speech. Mars intact like we make drinks. Mars is back like a lace string. Look, roll up some trees, we can pour up some tea. Flow like a CD, you know that it's me. Uh -huh. Pablo a pair in a Holy Ghost 3. What? Throw us a beat, we gon' bone appetite. The home of a beast on the road, I'm a freak. We don't fuck, we don't speak, that's the code of the street. If I take the breath, God give you the breathe. And remove the air from the wind and the breeze. Superman to turn to Christopher Reed. I injured his knee. My train of blood, you got in you that bleeds. Chop the tree of knowledge down and pick up the lead. Superman to turn to Christopher Reed. I injured his knee.